This is an espionage announcement. The weather in Vladivostok is clement for the time of year. Hutton Orbital. If you can hear this, then you really need to question your life choices. Remember, chase it, stun it, flush it. This is a security announcement. It's in the vents. Do not go in after it. That's what it wants. Hutton Orbital News, the unexpected chart of news programmes. Welcome to Hutton Orbital, home of the Big Aerial, Cubicle 3 and Gusto the Clown. Zero-G Magnetic Soccer Ball is a game of two halves, uh, or, or four quarters, or, or three thirds even. Re regardless of how many bits it has, the people of Hutton Orbital want it. The quadrennial Earth Sector Zero-G Soccer Ball Tournament and Merch Fest is in full swing. Those in the Scottish Quarter begin drowning their sorrows before their game and has even started as they've 
have their work in the morning and they don't want to stay up all night getting pished. The South Britain contingent are all resplendent in their red and white first aid t-shirts, reciting quotes from the vidcast of their famous victory in 3266 when the mag boots were big, heavy, clunky affairs, which means there were much better players than these modern softies. West Britain supporters are performing their ritual red dragon dance along the parade, which gave one half asleep security guard the fright of their life. And those from Northern Ireland have had their hurlies taken off of them despite protests of... You'd be telling us next we're not allowed to punch anyone in the face. A lone night shifter asks if his team are world champions yet. Just for a laugh, the locals tell him that they are, and he heads off whooping and hollering. It's time for tonight's big game. No one can remember who's playing who, but the mega gin is cheap, and there are free bar snacks, so it doesn't matter. The screens along the parade come to life, and a voice says... Offside! Oh, sorry, um, our mics are live! <coughs> Good evening, and welcome back to Hutton Orbital Live. Uh, we've had a week off, and are back with renewed vim, vigour, and <coughs> vitality. Well, apart from apart from that one, <laughs> and more seams. <laughs> there are always more seams after we've had a rest. Oh, hang on! Does that mean I get to double pun this week? Not if A L A N has anything to say about it. Mm. You, you could maybe do two words of the week. I'm not sure the um, ticker tapper would cope. Anyway, it's time for the headlines. Things that make you go boom. Cabbage is neglected as naked trucker escapes from retirement home. Record tumble as too hot, too messy rumbles along. You can't stop the funk, courtesy of Ed's 38. Galnet sound machine on T on tour. <laughs> no we for Alvin and no we. And other important Hutton BGS news. First this evening, news from the last week that the Achilles Aerospace Facility, nestled safely in the heart of Alioth, found itself at the mercy of what can only be described as a small group of highly motivated individuals. These troublemakers piloted a ship brimming with high impact explosive weaponry and oddly pictures of Flossie toting a rocket launcher, all in an apparent bid to sabotage the production of the much enjoyed supercruise overcharge capable frameshift drives as used to great effect by commanders, including the Stargoid, on speed runs to Hutton. Sources reveal that this daring group posed as Achilles Aerospace Engineers, complete with forged high-level clearance passes. How exactly they managed to dupe the security measures remains a mystery, though Achilles assures us it required incredibly sophisticated technology. One can only imagine the conversations that must have taken place. Sure, we're engineers. See, our shiny badges. The infiltrators navigated the first checkpoint without a hitch, which in hindsight, might have been a bit too easy. Automated security robots trained to spot a wolf in sheep's clothing soon identified the imposters as potential threats. Rather than opting for a peaceful resolution, the, dare, the, the daring engineers for a day who weren't actually engineers decided that opening fire on the facility was the best course of action. Spoiler, it wasn't. In the ensuing chaos, there were, unfortunately, no survivors. 
Interestingly, none of the perpetrators matched any known database profiles, leading one to wonder if they were perhaps a troop of rogue mimes, masters of disguise, or simply very camera-shy individuals. Achilles Aerospace has responded by ramping up their security measures tenfold. This incident is, according to their PR team, a glowing testament to the effectiveness of their security robots. It's comforting to know that the robots performed admirably, identifying the threat just before everything went boom. Consumers will be relieved to hear that the production of the Supercruise Overcharge modules remains unaffected. Achilles assures everyone that despite the rather explosive hiccup, everything is back on track. So while the saboteurs' efforts were indeed dramatic, they ultimately made about as much impact as a fly on your ship's canopy. There is no news as of yet about why there was an attack on the SCO production facility. Was it a rival corporation who were upset that someone else can bake someone inside their tin can ship in under a minute? Was it fast food companies upset at just the same thing? Or rogue hut and trucker purists who maintain that just under an hour and a half is plenty fast enough to get to Hutton and anything else just isn't cricket? Or maybe a prom night gone wrong? Investigations are ongoing. Yeehaw! Hold on to your space cowboy hats, if you're wearing anything at all, because Commander Eric Buck Naked, the galaxy's favourite space Texan and celebrated naturist, has come roaring back from retirement. Known for his drawl, as deep as the void, and his commitment to flying au natural. Buck has been lured back into the cockpit by none other than the latest marvel from Lake on Spaceways, the Type 8. For those of y'all who thought Buck was content to while away his golden years on the asteroid farm, cultivating cabbages in the buff and swapping tall tales with the locals, think again. When news of the Type 8's release reached him, Buck leapt from his hammock faster than a jackrabbit on a hot griddle. The prospect of those mighty engines and a cargo hold big enough to rival a small moon was just too tempting for our favourite space Texan. The Lake on Type 8, affectionately nicknamed the Space Longhorn, is a game changer in the world of long haul trucking. With a chassis as sturdy as a Texas ranch gate and a cargo capacity that would make a herd of cattle envious, it's no surprise Buck found it irresistible. This behemoth promises to deliver goods across the galaxy with unparalleled efficiency and style, ensuring that even the most seasoned space cowboys feel right at home, even if that home happens to be a little breezier than usual. Buck's return has caused quite the commotion among the Hutton Orbital truckers and beyond. Admirers from all corners of the galaxy are flocking to Lake on showrooms, hoping for a glimpse of Buck and his new ship. Rumour has it that Buck plans a grand inaugural journey, hauling a load of Centauri Megagen and Hutton mugs from Hutton Orbital to Colonia, proving once again that he's the undisputed king of the space lanes. Of course, true to form, he'll be making the trip in his birthday suit. While Buck's fans celebrate, not everyone is thrilled about his return. The local cabbage markets have taken a nosedive with traders lamenting the loss of their best cultivator. Who's going to tend these here cabbages now? cried one distraught farmer, clutching a, a withering leaf. But Buck's departure from farming has undoubtedly injected new life into the trucking community, and they're ready to ride shotgun on his next adventure. Clothes, optional. Back at Hutton Orbital, preparations for a grand celebration are in full swing. The bar is stocked to the rafters with extra barrels of gin, and the floor mopping guy has been seen buffing the landing pads to a high sheen. Even Alvin, the station's fearless chief, has been practicing his best welcome back howl. Either that or the noise is the spaniel equivalent of, would you please put on some trousers, man? As Buck Naked strapped, straps into the pilot seat of the Type 8, the galaxy collectively holds its breath. Will he reclaim his title as the most daring and bare pilot in the cosmos? Will the Type 8 prove itself worthy of Buck's legendary status?
Week 98 of Too Hot Too Messy is shaping up to be another good one with a total of 135,000 mugs delivered and 131,000 gins so far. Last week's deliveries alone totaled 585 mugs and 660 gin deliveries. Top squadrons are hot truckers, due in no small part to the efforts of Commander Chicks, the Buckyball Racers, Anti Xeno Initiative, the Winged Hussars, I think they're a Polish squadron, and in fifth place, Elite Dangerous ANZ. Hutton's approach routes are totally clear this week. There has only been one run to the orbital, but quality does count. Commander Osilliran made the run in 25 minutes 25 seconds and set a new Hutton record. Right on, Commander. The thing is, they didn't bring in any supplies as they were trying to save weight, so we're starting to run low on some things. If you're taking a trip out there, could you please bring some tins of pineapple chunks, yellow dusters, those wee handles for corn on the cob, and jiff lemon. Ta. Oh, and don't forget my chocolate. Ed Lewis, the legendary leader of Ed's 38, former Hutton trucker, and the only pilot to have ever successfully deployed the fabled F-bomb during a particularly rowdy Hutton convoy, has made the headlines once again. This time, he's not just making waves in space, but on an entire planet. His own. Yes, you heard that right. Ed Lewis has purchased an entire planet, aptly named Planet Funk. Reserved exclusively as an entertainment park for individuals with enormous heads. Not to be mistaken for the band of the same name, Planet Funk promises low gravity, ensuring that even the most top-heavy visitors can bend over to tie their space shoelaces without risking a broken neck. The interstellar playground is the brainchild of Ed, inspired by his deep love for galactic pop culture and fandoms. Planet Funk is set to be an adventure like no other featuring themed zones that pay homage to a myriad of classical and contemporary icons. Visitors will be able to mingle with the holographic recreations of celebrities from years, decades, and even centuries gone by, all brought to life in stunning detail. Ed's vision for Planet Funk includes themed zones inspired by some of the most beloved franchises in galactic history. Imagine exploring areas reminiscent of Jurassic Galaxy, dodging holographic dinosaurs or time travelling through Back to the Nebula, where flux capacitors are just as common as coffee machines. Visitors can relive the horror of Jaw Space, face off against shape-shifting aliens in Mr. Dusty Reborn, or join forces with space cops in Hot Fuzz Galactic Edition. Now, every theme park has its entry requirements, and Planet Funk is no different, except it's all about noggin to body ratio. Ed Lewis has invented a cunning machine that calculates whether your head is big enough to gain entry. This state-of-the-art contraption, dubbed the Bonsometer, measures your noggin with precision. Those whose heads don't quite meet the criteria are gently redirected to the dastardly Don's totally not scary Jurassic World 2, an alternative attraction that boasts of having evacuated the first planet due to an outbreak of Velociraptor malaria. For, the, for those uninitiated, Velociraptor malaria is a particularly nasty affliction. It's not the kind of malaria that makes you just feel feverish and sweaty. No, this one comes with a side of highly aggressive Velociraptor-like symptoms. Victims have been known to develop an inexplicable urge to hunt in packs, emit terrifying screeches, and develop an unhealthy fascination with moving objects. The last thing you want is to be surrounded by guests convinced they're prehistoric predators with a taste for theme park cuisine. Hence the evacuation. But that's not all. Planet Funk will feature over 60 unique attractions from more than 20 fan-favourite franchises, each offering interactive experiences and adventures. Whether it's solving interstellar puzzles, uncovering hidden secrets, or just having a blast with interactive exhibits, there's something for everyone. Guests can step into the shoes of their favourite characters, from space marines to mythical heroes, and embark on quests that tie together an epic galaxy-spanning story. One of the park's most anticipated attractions is the Funk Fusion Experience, where visitors can participate in live-action role-playing scenarios, battling robots from The Return of Mr. Dusty, surviving the night at Five Nights at Elvins, 
or navigating the quirky universe of the Gin Academy. Ed Lewis's ambition doesn't stop at creating an amusement park. He's seeding Planet Funk with holographic recreations of celebrities from the past. Visitors might bump into virtual versions of historical figures, renowned actors, legendary musicians. Fancy a chat with a 21st century rock star? Or a selfie with a vintage film icon? On Planet Funk, anything is possible. As the grand opening of Planet Funk approaches, excitement is reaching fever pitch. Ed Lewis, always the showman, has promised a spectacular launch event. Rumour has it that the inaugural celebration will feature a light show visible from space, a concert with holograms of music legends, and even a reenactment of the infamous F-bomb incident, minus the actual explosive expletive, of course. So, gear up, space adventurers, and set your course for Planet Funk. Whether you're a diehard fan of interstellar cinema, a lover of cosmic comics, or just someone with an impressively large noggin looking for a good time, Planet Funk is your ultimate destination. In the latest development in cutting-edge broadcast technology, the Galnet News Digest store proudly presents the Judo Foley machine. This marvel of modern engineering promises to revolutionise sound effects in broadcasting, capable of producing any sound effect you could dream of, as long as it sounds like Beetle Jude blowing bubbles into a bathtub. The Judah Foley machine is set to become an indispensable tool for audio engineers everywhere. Beetle Jude, the renowned sound artist, has lent her unique talents to this creation. Known for her unparalleled ability to mimic a wide array of sounds using only her mouth, a tub of soapy water, and a wig's practice gargling with cigarette butts and gravel. Look. Beetlejuice talent has been distilled into a single, highly advanced piece of equipment. Now, with the Judah Foley machine, you too can add the, that perfect bubble blowing ambience to your broadcasts, bringing a touch of whimsy and authenticity that only Beetlejuice can provide. But innovation comes at a price. The Judah Foley machine is exclusively available from the Galnet News Digest store, part of the Galnet Sound Machine suit of tools, for the princely sum of a billion arcs. Yes, you read that right, a billion. This price tag not only reflects the cutting edge technology involved, but also the exclusively in the exclusivity and prestige of owning such a rare piece of equipment. For those who can afford it, the Judah Foley machine promises to elevate your audio productions to a level of sophistication previously unattainable. Early reviews from the few elite broadcasters who have managed to acquire this device device are overwhelmingly positive. It's lovely, like having Beetle Jude in the studio with you, except without the splashing and space engine farty noises, said one enthusiastic user. Another noted, never before have my sound effects had such depth, such character. It's worth every arc. If you're looking to take your broadcast to the next level and have a spare billion arcs lying around, head over to the Galnet News Digest store and get your hands on the Judah Foley machine. It's the must-have tool for any serious broadcaster who values the art of sound. In the meantime, the rest of us will have to make do with our standard soundboards, dreaming of the day we too might perfect Beetlejuice engine boost effect and precision pew pew noises to our productions. For now, the Judah Forney machine remains the pinnacle of broadcast technology, a symbol of what's possible when artistry and engineering collide. Stay tuned to this week's Galnet Juice News Digest for more details on this groundbreaking device and an exclusive demonstration of its unparalleled capabilities. Welcome to the Hutton BGS report where I have a quick stroll through the 48 systems where Hutton has a presence to see if there's anything interesting to do in them. Well, let's start with the big news. LHS 340 tipped over into expansion so we went to to Avnoek. 
Unfortunately, the Minutemen and women already own this system, so we really have to leave it alone. It's a nice system, but it's a bit boring, unless you like mining. Not to worry though, LP245-10 is sitting at 78%. How that happened, I don't know, but I do expect we'll tip into another expansion any day now. Please, please leave that one alone. LHS340 is sorting itself out, finally, down to 69%. Other high influence systems to leave alone are PSPF, LF2, Van Man and Star, Wolf1481, LP532-81, Wolf124 and Wolf562. They're all above the 60% influence level, so we like to leave those ones alone. Investment is still the word of the day in Bernard Star, making it a great place to rake in the credits. There are more booms in Kokari, 36 of Yuchi, and Wolf 359. Ignore the civil liberty states, they're just an excuse for the locals to have one of those parties where everyone puts their ship keys in a bowl. Leuton 145-141 is having a bit of an outbreak, along with Epsilon Eridani and Trepin has gone into drought. We have an election in progress in Nui against the Nui partnership, but honestly, the place is a bit of a dump. Alvin doesn't like places that forbid him from making his mark. Same with LHS 3531, where we are in election with the Liberals of Fusang. Civil unrest is rife in BD074419 and in Wolf629. The peasants are revolting. You'll also notice that we're retreating from a few system we want to retreat from, so just let those ones go. But none of this helps unless you know what it all means. Well, what does it all mean? Well, if you want to truck it, then you are in luck. You can truck supplies to anywhere with an active boom or investment state, or run hunting missions there. Truck medical supplies into Leighton 145-141 and Epsilon Eridani. Truck water into Trepin to ease the drought. Run hunting missions in Noe and LHS 3531. And if you want to shoot it, then the best thing to do would be a bit of bounty hunting in BD074419 and Wolf629. And that's it for this week's Hutton BGS Report. Thank you oh. very much, everybody. Well, we were mildly seamless there. Pretty oh, seamless. That, that was seamless. I seem no ships. No, wait, yes. I seem no seams. <laughs> I seem no seams. I see, I see, I see no seams, no. Um, anyway, well, d- d- welcome to the studio. Um, d- d- we're going to, actually, normally we sort of introduce everybody, but I'm going to introduce everybody um, in a slightly different style this week, because oh. we have had a question from the audience, or a statement saying, I have absolutely no idea what these news stories are about. So I might as well sort of revisit e- each of us in turn to say, well, what on earth was that about? And then I can introduce you as you go. So th- the first one was, was about things that make you go boom. Uh, well, well, that was an article from Galnet News last week about somebody attempting to sabotage the Super Cruise Overdrive um, factory. We don't know what relevance it had, whether it was just related to a CG or something. We don't know, but the robots did the thing. The second one was um, Amelia's one about... Um, the galaxy's okay. favourite space techs, and we've got more on that in a bit. But the rum- rumours are that you've had to use um, mind bleach um, as a result of having seen Buck Naked walking about the um, orbital here. I am so glad he's he's making a comeback. I love Buck. I think he's awesome. Amelia doesn't need the mind bleach. She likes what she saw. <laughs> I like what I see. I like what I see. I do remember that video from was it one of the Lave Cons where he broadcast yeah. from Texas. Where he I remember the Stetson. yes. I remember the audible yeah. gasp that went in, round the room. It was just looking at oh oh, <laughs> oh, oh why well, he's actually uh, done it. Yep, um, mm-hmm. he didn't get us an infringement, but um, it was close. So that was the <laughs> second one. Uh, the third one, obviously, Flossie was talking about the latest hut and run speed run. Flossie, mm-hmm. yep, yes. Who who was it again? Yeah. Um, You're going to make us scroll them. back if you ask questions like <laughs> yeah. that. Commander, well, I, 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 I did sort of, a, I yes, did sort of intro the segment with saying we are going just back. You said it and you just talked over a Commander Ozilivan. Ozilivan. Yes. 
It's all in. Yeah. It's something very. I quite like the time that Oziran got it in. You know, uh, 25, 25, twenty-five minutes, twenty-five seconds. Yeah, yes. twenty-five, twenty-five. So, so the, a full hour faster. Oh, in the time twenty-five, twenty-five. In the year <laughs> yeah, twenty-five, cool. twenty-five. Yes. Yes. Well, oh, very good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, these these speeds they're getting up to uh, now, Flossie, are, you know, it's a good thing that those people carrying your photograph didn't smash the Super Cruise Overdrive facility. <laughs> we appear to have a bit of an echo. <laughs> an echo? I, I was Sorry? just about to say, it was, echo, it echo. was very seamless. It's, it's, it, well, it's not me. Is somebody got a, uh, is it Volcarius? No? A little echo, or is it a really big echo, like all the way through the show kind of echoing echo? It kind of stopped now. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that tells me it was me. vocarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to see it. I'm just going to oh. fix it. <laughs> well, I don't right. know. Mr. Dusty's walking yeah, around with a speaker on his back. Oh, the echo's gone. Okay, a little, a right. little echo. Next, next yes. story, next person. Uh, we didn't forget the chocolate, by the way, Flossie. Um, oh, the next God. one. <laughs> the next one was introduced by Litho Breaker and was all about Planet Funk. Mm-hmm. And F bombs, yeah, and, 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 and F bombs, and F bombs. So, so for the uninitiated, who was Ed? What was this amazing F bomb that he used? And what on earth is Planet Funk all about? Just Ed was a really uh, nice guy with a lot of biscuits. Yes, he did like biscuits. Who used to do <laughs> reviews of biscuits live on Twitch every week, and especially got quite dunking a following for his biscuit reviews. Yeah, he got quite a following for his biscuit reviews. Occasionally, he'd run pub quizzes with his dad. I mean, what else do you need to know about the guy? Thoroughly all around. Well, no, all tell us about chat. the f bomb. Oh yeah, that'd be when the pirates attacked him during one of our um, hunting cruises. You know, those little see the sights take some rare goods from one place to another, and oh, planet funk, the pirates have attacked and killed him. Yes, I mean it's a bit like the tab bomb that used to exist in in early versions of the Cobra Mark Three simulator, wasn't it? Yep. That destroyed yep. everything it, it, nearby. It, 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 it can silence a room in Frontier Towers in three milliseconds. <clears throat> so, okay, but tell us about Planet Funk, because obviously he left the Pilots' Federation and, and Hutton and his biscuit-dunking escapades. He, he, he ventured on to, to Pastures New and um, is creating planets for other people now. A bit like yes. Slighty Bart, fast, I guess. Yeah, and um, he's so creating one for the Funko Pops people. The Funko Yay! Pops people, which is, the, I, I think, the Funko ab Pops people were the Lego people. bonus bonsed. Yeah. yeah. But it was Lego. I think the company that did it used to do the Lego-ish games, possibly, or some of them. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and now they've decided to do one about people with enormous heeds. Yep. <laughs> Unfeasibly large crania. Yes. yes. Like, a, like an orange and a toothpick. But, of course, you're only allowed to go and visit this theme park if you've got an enormous heed. So Dark Helmet from Spaceballs, perfectly welcome. Yes. Yes. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's what he's doing. Um, so you can always go and look him up on. Was it X? It's not called Twitter these days. It's called X and whatever. That's what Ed's up to. I think he's um, marketing manager now for all things Funko. I mean, imagine his room is now wall to wall Funkos and Funk. things. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they decided they they were fed up with filling landfill with um, unsold Funkos of you know poor sci-fi films. Uh, there are some really cool ones as well. I decided that computer games were way better. And actually, I've had a look at it, and it's quite gory and in a sort of blowing heads off plastic toys kind of way. He must have to be funking careful how he says things, though, when he's yes. talking about it. Yes. But um, it, it, it looks fun. I mean, I'm, I'm going to see whether there's any kind of videos or previews we can have for ECM. So that was your one. Um, and this hopefully this is helping Little Grey. I think there's some nodding... Yes, there we go. There's some nodding from the green room. Um, and then, um, Flossie, the Judah Foley machine. Uh, yes, apparently, um, the, when they're doing Galnet News recently, uh, they lost all the sound effects, so um, Jude was Well, not so much lost. They were given a mute-on sound video by the pilots. I, I don't know. Yes. I, I don't yeah. know the full story, sorry. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah, there was a video released of the Type 8 by the Pilots Federation that had no sound. So they had to just employ the Judah Foley machine, apparently. Oh, right, yes. You know, making... So, so it's make, making sounds of a, a mouse. And... Yes, and, <laughs> and pew, 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 and this kind of stuff, you know. We have got a, yeah. we have got one of the Judah Foley's in the studio mm. uh, that does those right. kind of, you know, clang noises and things. Really, really realistic noises. 
Um, we don't know whether this week's Galnet News Digest is a rep- reprise of that or they've gone on to other things, but we, we shall we shall see. But part of the um, Galnet News Digest sound machine. The Galnet News Digest yeah. sound machine, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's also a band. Mm. With right. um, yeah, Pete Wotherspoon on bass. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and then well, we had we're, the... We're getting bass building. Base build. Oh, don't, don't. The spoilers. Spoilers. And then we had the Apology Officer talking all about um, No We. No We and, yeah, just the, the BGS uh, report. So the BGS is a background simulation um, and it changes things going to states, different states, and that affects their influence and things like that. So, But, but normally like you to... tell us Barnard Star is in a right old mess. No, Barnard Star's not been in a right old mess. It's had an ex- it's had a investment going on for ages now. Um, so basically what it's like is if you've got, you're at a loose end, you want to do something to help Hutton, but we'll go through a list of what's going on and then we'll, we'll ask the question you were going to ask was, what does all that mean? And then we'll tell you, you know, if you want to do a bit of trucking, if you want to do a bit of shooty shooty, then the best places to go and where you're likely to make most, uh, profit and have most fun, you know, so that's, yeah, it's, it's quite good. So we, we break down, um, but really you're listening for the end part. Uh, yeah, the end we, part, and that's you, it for the this week's report. Where we yes. tell you what to do. Yeah, but you like um, to know what's going on. So, yeah, we've expanded into Gnu or No We. No, no We. No We. She's taken the. Uh, no, no, no. It really is taken, taken it. You're the, not allowed. Yes. To, yeah. So, no, we've been at, We've got stuff going on in No We. So, we haven't expanded into No We. Sorry. We've expanded into Carnuek. Uh, um. So, but no we is we've got. I think it's an election going on in no we. Yeah, I, I think you said it's a bit of a bit of a dump. I don't know much about no. It's it's not a dump as such. It's got a lot of icy worlds in it. It's got a few uh, ringed gas giants. So if you want a bit of mining or you fancy a bit of maybe bounty hunting, it's probably okay. But um, yeah, it's it's somebody else is in there, and what we tend to do is when another player group's got a system, we tend to leave it alone. Well, and, I, th- I and think not the owner. Our influence there. The owner is actually the LHS two six three Universal Corporation, which ah, okay. is not owned by anybody no. else. No, but the Minutemen and women are in there, so you are yeah. they. I'm just having a look at Noe here. It says they got they got the Noe Independent Consultant, Noe Partnership, Hutton Orbital Truckers, LHS three forty six Democrats, and the Noe Energy Limited. Oh no, the 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 uh, the Minutemen are in uh, Canuck, the one that we expanded into. So we're. Expanding back out of there. Oh, oh that's the yes, other that's one. the one. No, yeah, no, no we yeah. is a valid no target. You can see why I have to write it all down, can't you? I'm not an expert. Yep. But yeah, no, no, clearly, is... clearly not an expert. Um, but yeah, we're yes. we're in Gnoe. Um, we're doing stuff yeah, in Gnoe. We, we've got so a huge election in Gnoe. We we got a huge election in Gnoe. Um, so elections benefit best from a uh, non-violent influence things. So trading, mission running seem to be the things. Lots of uh, leafleting. Lots of leaflet deliveries and things like that. And yeah, um, so you can go there, you can go to the mission boards, either the one in your ship or the one on the uh, the promenade, um, and you can pick up uh, missions for yep. uh, hunting truckers and run those. And, yep. and it's, it's uh, we will win a, I think we'll win a station, because oh, we're, we're tied with the third place people, the No We Partnership. Yes. Um, That's they've got Thurston Enterprise, apparently. Oh, very nice. Uh, Thurston Enterprise is a little installation on Noe 3B mm. that has, as far as we can tell, no services. Yes. Oh, I've got the hiccups. <laughs> My goodness. Seems. Not, not Noe 2P. Noe 2P. Oh, Noe know. 2P. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, if only. But it, 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 it's, a, it's a bit like, well, th- this weekend is Glastonbury weekend, isn't it? So, uh, you know, yeah. no, no we is the order that you just do not want to go to the pit loos. So <laughs> No. Mm. Very appropriate. Um, so looking at looking at the list, I mean, there are a couple of urgent ones in there, really. Uh, Trepin's, Trepin's get into a drought, um, and a drought can just come up. The best well, way to ease the drought. Yeah, well, the best way to ease the drought is just to take water in. You can buy water and ship it in. Yeah, or um, send the Scottish football fans home so they stop drinking all the beer. Yeah, well, there's that as well. Yeah, um, yeah but then there'll be th- no way. I think I think you can count that one as mission accomplished. <laughs> um, but you can truck in. Um, there are two systems: Loughton one four five dash one four one and Epsilon Eridani are both having outbreaks at the moment. So if you like to profit from the misery of others, so outbreaks, you can take and medical droughts, supplies. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's it. So that's that's. 
the kind of downside of things, but you can help. You know, you can do things to help. So, yeah, it's absolutely, you know. No, it, gives you, um, it gives you something to do. I think I think we're going to officially say that we do what, as, as nobody else is there, and it's got a sort of silly name. No, we. I think we. I think we have to. It's only right, isn't it? We, we sort of yeah. have to take that one. Yeah, you want you want to pick that one a bit, but that'll be nice. Yeah, um, and the the leading faction in there, I think, has got around fifty percent. We've got about eleven percent at the moment, so that won't change until after the end of the election. And then we'll no. jump into second place, and then there's the long gallop up to the LHS two six three Universal Corporation. Oh, those swines! The swines, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yes, that's not what I was going to say, but anyway, um, yeah. yeah, you can, yeah, you know. And if you fancy shooting things, you can go a a couple of systems where there's a bit of civil unrest going on. Um, but bounty hunting always helps. Um, always helps to to sort out the civil unrest. Um, and you know, there's lots to do. There's lots of different things to do in our system. We're in forty eight systems. That's just which is oh. huge. That's I mean, it's mad. a good thing you don't have to read through the whole list each week, you know? No, I try not. I try to keep the list to a minimum, but there are some things like, like boom, sta- you know, stations I'm, that are systems I'm just, that are boom. Just looking at No Wee, there are an awful lot of fleet carriers there. Yeah, probably for the mining or the bounty hunting. As I say, it's got at least three, um, three ringed gas giants. And 21 but, fleet carriers. Yeah. <laughs> seven each <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yes um yeah i'm assuming that's what it is i don't know anything else going on it, it's not an exciting system when i looked at it i thought yeah okay <laughs> you know but, well there's yeah. uh, maybe maybe it's a, a new home for amelia to go uh, ice it's, mining or something yeah it's yeah. one of those ones as well it might be next door to something that's that's worth being in but the system's full you know what i mean and people start parking in the system next door I keep laughing every time I hear the name. No, no we. we. Yeah, well, that's why that's why we've decided we're going to keep that one. Uh, also, it starts with a G. It's G N O W E. No, it's a silent G. Yeah. A, bit, a, a bit like a bit like gnome. <laughs> yeah, a bit like gnome or gnosis. And gnashes. And gnashes. Yes. Yeah. But not galoshes. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, BGS is just a kind of a list of things you can do if you feel like it to help button it. Cool. And then we are also joined in the studio. It didn't have an article, um, but Commander Valkarius is here as usual. Good evening, Hutton Orbital. Good evening, Hello. Commander Valkarius. And um, you, you've got some in in a bit news for us on uh, Indra, in is bit. it? <laughs> in just in just a bit. Yeah. In, in yeah. Indra in a bit. Yes. Yes. But first, Indra banter section. Indra banter section. Yes. <laughs> uh, but first. Dum, do, we, do, dum, we have, oh. do we have a word from our sponsor? <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, was there a live stream before we Hat do stand. that? There really was a live stream because it was the last Wednesday of the month. So, yeah, we've had a live stream. Yeah. Um, Hang on, does that make they, this the last I wasn't Thursday talking about that. I was talking about the advert coming up. Oh, it's coming up. It, it it's coming well, up. That's, that's you. what I mean. It's, you could have said, and now a word from our sponsor and just oh, ran we'll it. Get to no, it. no, you know. Oh, no. It, it's not what it says in the script. It says it there. Look, it says, it says there and then that and then this bit. Yeah, there you go. Well, yep. our script is There's very script. uncoordinated. Loose. I think it's not really a script. It's more like a, a page of shorthand footnotes. It's, it's bullet points. Suggestions. <laughs> bullet points made like, with real bullets. They're more like guidelines pew, pew, pew. than actual See, that was rules. The, the, the Jude Sound <laughs> yeah. Machine. Pew, pew. Yeah, vague guidelines. <laughs> it's a bit like parlay, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> So there really was there was a, uh, a lot of talk about the Type Eight Freighter due for released in August. What described the... as oh, go on the go Type on. Eight described as quick, fuel efficient, and turned surprisingly well. And oh. now a word from our sponsors. A word go! from our sponsors. Howdy there, folks. It's been a spell, ain't it? For those who don't know me. I'm Buck Naked, spokesman for Lacon Spaceways, and a hunting trucker. Sometimes taking the bull by the horns ain't enough. Here at Lacon Spaceways, we believe it's time for you to be the bull. Coming soon to an intra-astra near you, Lacon will proudly present the Type 8. Built tough and durable, we challenge any china shop to get in our way. We kept him sized for a medium landing pad, 
that squeezed out all the extra doohickeys we deemed unnecessary just to jam in more cargo capacity. By our initial calculations, if you want to risk it all and run without shields, devoting all internal slots to cargo, you can fill this baby with 406 tons of juicy, delicious, credit-earning goodies. Or mugs. Fill them with hutton mugs and mug up the whole galaxy. This bull ain't much of a fighter with only one medium and five small hard points. Just remember the old Earth story about Ferdinand and treat him that way, and you'll be fine. Unlike Ferdinand, though, this one can really move quick when it needs to, so don't expect to be lollygagging underneath the cork tree. The equipped SCO drive will hustle you and your cargo to the next starport lickety split. Lacon Spaceways Type 8 Be the Bull. Be the bull. Be the bull. Yes. With a, the big I'm long horn. Yes. Oh, it's so good to hear from Buck Naked again, isn't it? It's been it's years. Been, yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm glad it's uh, only I, one little. <laughs> I, I can always hear. <laughs> How do we keep up with your shenanigans while you two around? Yes. Why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we had to retire yeah. the old adverts because he used, um, unfortunately, some licensed music on them. So we, uh, we, we, we have gone back to them and said, well, maybe we should you know reprise some of the originals about you know the uh the diamond back and uh the yeah. Asp. Six advert, yeah. yeah yeah but we need to do them back with um, some new music so we don't get infringements yes yeah yes. and obviously the so, video on screen is courtesy of frontier unlocked who forgot to put the notice on it saying don't just show our video so guess what <laughs> we are um mm. i blame so, Chuck yes Hagan. It's it's quite a thing. Uh, as, it is. as Buck says, it's, it's got six hard points, five small and one medium. And the medium is at the back underneath. So it's as if that's to point backwards when you're running away. That's No, um, that's known as the Flossie cannon because um, she was a tail gunner, wasn't she? Yeah. Aren't you a specialist tail gunner, Flossie? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's known as the Flossie gun. The Flossie gun, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's if got... It's, I've got some... If it's at the back, slung underneath and pointing forwards, that would be something very different. So let's not go there. Yes. I'm yes, going to get me one it. of them. <laughs> oh, yes. The, 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 really? The third, well, get, 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 get a third lance. That's got a, that's got a, class, <laughs> that's got a class four exactly I, there. Oh, it's got a bigger one. <laughs> I have yeah. a third lance. I hate third lance. <laughs> You're always can't look off out the window. in the cockpit. Yeah, can't look out the window. Um, yeah, so um, the type I mean, look, at looking... that, look at that cockpit in... You know, on the Type A, it it's perfect. It's just like yeah. all it's the Lake on ships. Symmetrical. It looks yes. to me like a Type Seven cockpit, and it's open. It. You know, you can see everything. You can see a lot. Well, even I think, that's what they said like, about book as well. I, I think they've addressed the, yeah. the, the the old problem of you know you put the bubble on the front and you crash into things like planets and you smash the glass. This one's got the oh great yeah the big, big horns horns gonna, at the front. Yeah, that's yeah. going to hold something up. Um, I so do like being at... able to see everything. Yeah. So looking at the internals, it's got a size 5 fuel tank, which is 32 tonnes, um, size 5 thrusters, and a size 5 FSD. Um, so pretty pretty kind of standard medium ship stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Size 3 life support and sensors. No idea what the power plant is. Um, yeah, also, far, my... also class 5. Is that class plant. 5 as well. That's that's yep. pretty good then. Um, Some, and it's something a size then... 4 distributor. Something that I just noticed on that video was how the legs retract and go into the ship. Mm. Oh, yeah, they fold and go like oh, close, They look yeah. so cool. Oh, it's yeah. very Like cool. little feet. Yeah, yeah like edge to a nine feet. Yes. Now, I know Buck was saying, if you want to risk it all, you can go for 106 cargo in it. But, you know, you probably want to put a shield on there. It's got... Nah. Yeah. It's got Shields optional... It's got a size one. A size two, a size four, two size fives, three size House. sixes, and a size seven. So I reckon if you put something on the size one slot, you maybe want to put, I don't know, a tiny fuel scoop or a docking computer or something docking like computer. that. Yeah, and also then maybe a size, a maybe a size, ship. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a size oh, four ships. shield, then that awesome. would give you about 388 capacity, which is still nearly double what you get with Python. Also, have you seen those manoeuvring thrusters underneath each of the uh, 
Oh, this mm-hmm. thing can do oh, flips. Underneath the horns, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. It is a lovely thing. It really is. And those, the way the engines at the it's back are lined up your speed. as well. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously it's it's got good cargo. So I mean, it's designed as a you know mug and gin runner, really. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. apparently mm. uh, there are rumours it's coming with the Super Cruise Overdrive built in. That's not a rumour. That's a fact. It's coming with Super Cruise. So Overdrive is it running in. super cool? And therefore, oh. could it be a contender for even faster hut and run times? Could this be the ultimate it hut could and runner? Be because they said yeah. it's built with Super Cruise Overdrive in mind. So, so it's the, fuel well, efficient the, and cool. So the, the thing is, though, the um, the speed, the super cruise overcharge speed is based on the mm-hmm. class of the frameshift drive, and you can't yes. downsize those things. So the the um, the sidewinder having a class two FSD has a natural advantage. Yeah. Um, the fuel usage of super cruise overcharge is um, now. <clears throat> so yeah, the Python two and the Type eight probably have lower fuel usage just because they're specialist ships but in general it's based on the module not the act like not the actual fuel module you put there but the size yep. of the core fuel module mm. so having class five fuel that's going to burn through quite a bit even so you can take 400 tons of fuel yeah in addition but you're going to be burning it faster than a sidewinder would so yeah and the other thing is it's it's a medium pad so you've only got one pad at hutton as opposed to two if you're in the small ship yeah but we're going to give it a go Oh, somebody will oh, yeah. give it a go. Yeah, yeah somebody absolutely. will definitely give yeah, it a go. It, you can, yeah, you'll probably get a lot further if you just jump to Alpha Centauri and then just turn on Super Cruise Overcharge. You'll probably get a lot further than a Sidewinder would before it needs a few friends to refuel it. Mm. But I doubt it'll be Well, faster. it's that, it's, it's that um, Formula One pit stop kind of, you know, yeah. Do, yeah, are we on a two-stop or three-stop strategy? Or, yeah. See, I don't know about anyone else, but I use the Hutton Run as a way to christen my ships that are medium and small power yeah. users. Mm. So the first thing the first thing I'll be doing when I get one of these is I'll be doing a hut and run. Yeah, have you that's... noticed that? Have you noticed that you the engines get kind Alvin of pop out as well? Sorry? Yeah, that looks cool. Have you noticed that the engines kind of pop out? Yeah, yes. yeah the, 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 the nacelles. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, we talked about that the uh, a few weeks ago. How they have to retract, I think, to fit on the medium pad. Yeah, it's the only way it fits the medium pad. Yeah. See, that, that was the compromise of the oops we've accidentally made the type 7 too big you know by by having it shrink i like the way amelia's doing the the hutton runs a christian thing because then you get your ass groove in the chair by the time <laughs> you get to hutton an hour and a half in the chair and your ass groove is there and it's, it's yours good, from then on it's a good way from for christening any ship i i feel yes yeah um i've i've uh, i've been looking at the the modules and i think having the two size fives is quite good um, because I'm going to have to obviously take it out to Beagle Point because it's the only T-shirt I haven't taken to Beagle Point. Um, and having a size five, two size fives like that means you can put on a decent size fuel scoop and a decent size, you can put on a full size FSD booster as well. So that's that's going to help a lot. But you're going to, if you're taking that to Beagle Point, yeah. what are you going to put in the six, six, six and seven? Uh, I don't know. Gin and mugs. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we'll just have a dice. maybe we'll just have a basketball court or a, a swimming pool or a really big sofa. Oh yeah, and um, a games table. A size seven sofa. Oh yeah, yeah. Size, size seven, seven sofa. Seven. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at the hatches under it. Does it doesn't look like it's got a? Oh, it does. It have a hatch for fighter launch. See, there's a hatch at the back there, yeah, which possibly. obviously for SRVs. So, yeah, it could be fighter capable. We don't know mm. that yet. Never mentioned that. Um, and two yeah. seats. And, oh, yeah. And I noticed what they were saying was one of the hub points is right above the cockpit. All right. So, you got the, 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 the their little, get little pop the guns. The, yeah. the thing is, those small hard points, obviously, they're, they're, they're um, perfectly fine for things like mining. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. they're fine for that kind of thing. Or yeah. you could put a, uh, you could put shard cannons on them. They don't go pew pew pew. They go boom 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 Splat. The, that really, the only that's a poor attempt at the judo foley. But, uh, but yeah, with, with shards with a class four dish, that's gonna that better be weapon like weapon focused because the the moment <laughs> you start doing that, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Is your weps gonna start dropping, and yeah. then if they're azimuth shards, you're gonna cook. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing that unless um, it runs cold. That's the thing that Arthur mentioned. He was going through those internals and they went, size for distributor, yeah, it's not a fighter. 
<laughs> well, I, I bet, well, yes and no. So the the Asp Explorer has the same number of hard points. In fact, one of them it's got two class twos and four class ones. And yeah, it's got a class four distributor, and people run rails and PAs with that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I think yeah, for probably for laser mining, like if you try to, uh, I'm sure I don't know, how, Amelia, how if you're laser mining, um, how many mining lasers can you fit like on a on the dist whatever distributor you're using? How many hard points do you have? But I, I mean, like <laughs> it, it, mining short, lasers short, are not power hungry. Yeah, you, you, well, if you're mining, you're probably only going to fit two because any more is just a waste of space. I've well, never not, overheated, not... even when I bristled my ship with no. mining lasers. No, but I mean, like, can't you? Doesn't it just tank your distributor if you just fill it for no. mining? My, lasers? Mining no, mining lasers really. are not, not power hungry. Really. You no, you okay. end up just mining chunks faster than you, your uh, collectors can pick them up. Yeah. yeah. So that that's basically your bottleneck there. Well, I, I presume you'll want a um, an abrasion blaster, and then just. So Only if you're mining, really? Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, abrasion blaster. You should always have an abrasion blaster. Um, I think a lot of the other stuff fits on the... Oh, what are they called? The, the, the ones where you put your, your heat sink launchers and all that kind of thing. Your... Utility, utility, utility. utility yeah, slots. I think a lot of the stuff fits on your utility slots for mining. Well, well, I mean, not the web, not the actual, no. not the abrasion but, blaster or the lasers, so, but so everything utilities, else. You need, if you're doing core, you need the pulse wave um, scanner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I think that's the. You only should utility. always see that this is the thing. You should always do core. Yes, unless you need well, the materials boom. for engineers. No, you should still do core even for materials. Oh, I suppose so. When yes. you crack, when you crack an asteroid, that's what the abrasion blaster is for. Oh, good point, good point. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Looks so, there. Oh, and also they mentioned coming in September, I think, is a Power Play 2. Power Play? What's that? I don't know. No. <laughs> no nobody knows. Say, knows. But, it's a thing. It's, but number it's, two is it's, coming. It's, you, you it's, it's thing, what they invented. You, it's what they invented ahead. when they couldn't spell PWP. <laughs> Space Risk. It's like... It, it's you, you. Well, see, I thought the BGS was space risk. Yeah, yeah but... it's just space dodgy. But yeah, you um, power play is you at the moment is you click a thing, you wait like three weeks or so, or may <laughs> maybe that. four. You that. do one run Postman in like a. And his black and white gas. You do one run in like a Type Nine or a cutter, and then you get your like pack hounds or Imperial hammer or whatever you're trying to get. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you deliver some leaflets for four weeks and then you're sorted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the pris prismatic shield, yeah. I've just put the mm. um the, the the shot of the uh, rotating hollow ships up on the uh, concourse up. I haven't been back to check to see if Python Mark II's in one of them yet. And do we need to record a new version of this with the Python Two? Good question. Um, I ha I haven't checked that either. Although you, what we don't see is um, like resource extraction sites with Python twos trying to pirate anyone. Like they, they, so there are no have, NPCs they, they with Python twos yet. Yeah, they they don't have sixteen k arcs, so they they can't buy one yet. <laughs> yeah, we need to get NPCs with the new ships, don't we? Yeah, I mean, certainly the Type Eight. You want to be seeing that round mining sites doing its thing, or you know, on mm. on space lanes somewhere, and yeah. And you want to kind of take on a Python Mark Two to see what they're actually like, we, you know, see how the, the game. Yeah, briefly. Yeah, you want it to be brief, actually. Yeah. Well, you don't okay, want it to be. Well, but when it we find out be. what on Earth uh, <laughs> Power Play Two is about, we'll we'll have something to say about it. But um, it, it's not yeah. really been our thing. But maybe. maybe it no, might no, as our experts in yeah. Power Play One. So, uh, is it is it time for space news? I think it may be space news. Space, space news. news. Hang on, uh, run the theme tune. Space news. Space news. Space news. Space news. Oh, Alan looks so sad. Was that Steve? I can't tell. Alan and Steve and a banana for scale. Okay, so um, what's the first one? Who 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 wants to uh, let's say who on the first one? Yep, sure. Uh, hang on, I've had enough delayed flights in the last few weeks. Here we go, and um, 
So why yeah, are boring Starliner astronauts weeks, in space? But, um, yeah. But see if you let them talk. Damn. <laughs> um, they're in space because they're testing out their new Super Duper Starliner from Boeing. And as we know at the moment, Boeing are very, very good at making aircraft. And they never have problems with doors falling off or wheels falling off or anything like that. And in this case, they don't have any problems with helium leaks or thrusters failing. Nothing like that. So, so that there's two astronauts on the ISS with a beautifully reliable capsule who went up for a little five-day journey 22, 23 days ago. <laughs> and they'll be home any time now. You've Maybe. seen their names? Yeah, oh, I, I, oh, here we go. Their names are? Dooney Butch Williams, Sonny. or Sonny, and Butch Wilmore. Butch Wilmore sounds like an astronaut, doesn't he? That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a that's an astronaut yeah, name. Yeah, the guy, guy on the left looks like Alice Cooper. The uh, the lady on the left. Yeah, <laughs> that's Sunny or Sunny. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, here, here's a, here's a picture of the. Um, that's Butch at the back. Yeah. Here's a, here's a picture of the Boeing oh, yes. Starliner. Now, uh, so Litho, it, on a scale yeah, of oh my goodness, we've it lost went all up our three helium. weeks ago. All oh, right. Okay. Well. It went up three weeks ago. It was meant to be less than a week's trip. It's still there. As of uh, yesterday, they have declared that they do not currently have a schedule for its return, which is a little unnerving. There were, I think, three helium leaks on the way up, but the the um, it's not a problem. It's genuinely not a problem. They've uh, the valves are all closed now. The helium is staying in the tank. They've got plenty for the return journey. They are concerned about the the physical manufacture of the thing that they've had three helium leaks on the way up, but there's no real concern about it getting them home. They also had their two of their 12, I think it is, or three of their 12 thrusters fail on the way in, which again, for return, they don't really need them all. So it's not a huge problem. Well, only if no more fail. Well, yeah, they don't really want any more to fail, but they'd still be able to get back. Even if they did, they just might have to damage the ISS a little bit while they were leaving, which or well, so reading cool. reading um, another article, obviously, I, I think I was reading something about the fact that because of so much burning up on the way in, um, they can't sort of bring it back and then work out what went wrong. So they have to do the what went wrong stuff up there. Yes. Yeah, which is why they're being delayed so long. They're actually not quite taking it apart, but doing some very deep analysis and diagnostic to see what the flipping heck went wrong with so many of these pieces. Well, I mean, it, I think it, it might be that they've been using the spare bolts off the doors of the uh, 737 Max. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Both... Well, the, 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 the attempting to jump start it on the pad, push start it on the pad, didn't bode well, as per the picture on screen at the moment. Uh, mm. you know. Yeah, they both look quite concerned there, don't they? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, the thing is that there are, there are always backup plans for getting them home anyway, and it's not it's not yeah. an extended well, stay. Like if, there's if, nobody at risk because people stay up there for ages and ages. So um, oh yeah, there's, a year, there's no a year one there. or more. They've got yeah. loads of supplies on the station. They've got uh, the, easily the ability to send up an alternative capsule if they decided it wasn't safe. They just they want to get it right because it's kind of important to Boeing that this thing can fly again, and kind of useful to NASA if they get a second commercial crew platform. So. Yes, and obviously there's the you know squeaky bum time for the pilots when they get it and go. Oh, we're going to go back. Oh now. yes, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not coming back on it. Put it that way. Yes. Mm. Um. Okay, that was the first one, and then uh, apology officer. Do you want to cover the second one? I will if I can remember what it was about. Uh, I'll put it up <laughs> on the screen now for you. Here we go. The yes, this is the the oh. Chinese the Chinese lunar probe has come back. With yeah, the, the number six with rice, yeah, soil and uh, rock samples from the far side of the moon, which is geologically very different from the near side of the moon. So we don't have a lot. We don't know a lot about it because it's on the other side. There's a lot of kind of technical difficulties there with communications and things. But the Chinese lunar probe has returned not to outer Mongolia, but to inner Mongolia. Um, and there's a picture there of the capsule lying in the ground with a Chinese flag next to it and it looks um, it looks like it's been pretty toasted but intact so they're um, they're they're eagerly awaiting samples it says here so I think they're quite interested to see what's in there, they're kind of hoping there might be some ice there, some water ice um, which would help if you were trying to, you know, if you were trying to maybe, I don't know, build a moon base you know, that would be quite handy Um 
And I think if they, you know, if they did get the kind of the network of satellites up around the moon, that would make communication possible as well. So you know, it then becomes plausible to build a base on the far side of the moon. So yeah, I have um, noticed um, the the name of the landing site there. Sissy Wang Sissy Wang Wang Banner Yeah Yeah It's got the word Wang in it It's got the word Of course we noticed Yeah Sissy Wang I'm I'm pretty sure that one of our local delivery companies is uh, Sissy Wang Banner Yeah They do a lovely number No that's Sissy Wang Banger which is a whole different thing Ah right Banner Yes my mistake. I keep, yeah. I keep saying you guys need to expand in more into Imperial space because we have so many systems with Wang in the name. No! Oh, <laughs> now that you've said that, we will. Yeah, the, the best is <clears throat> a cock Wang. No joke. Why are we not there? Why do we why, not why have a station there? That, one? that might have to be the, really uh, the next mission. Is it is it quite far away from where we are? It's far away from anywhere. I think I think it's um, so you know how like the, the Thargoids are on the kind of the skirts of our space on one yeah. side. I think a Cockwang's basically like opposite to that. <laughs> that is in. Um, uh, it doesn't sound like you're talking about a system. It sounds like you're talking about an object. <laughs> I can hear you giggling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it, basically it's mm. far away from anywhere. I don't think it's uh, it's close yeah. to anything good at all. So. No one wants a cock wang next to them. Uh, it it says it's uh, 139 light years from 360 Fuji. So yeah, it's it's about 140 to 150 light years away from Hutton Space. Well, we we've got 36 off Fuji, so it wouldn't it be that difficult to expand towards it, surely. Uh, expansion targets. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just having a look. Yeah, yeah. And is it owned by anybody who might want to keep it? That's the that's the other one. Yeah, that's it. Um, um, it's it's currently owned by Levine's Legion. Okay. Yeah, that's not surprising. Most <laughs> many the eighty yeah. old systems around there. And, but are we don't want to invade the empire. We just want to get to a cop wing. <laughs> yeah, we we'll just have a little. A little outpost or something in a cockwang. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't got much. It's got White Moon Manufacture, more platform, and Zahn Colony. Yes. Yeah, yes. 40k population. Also, I think I'm pretty sure you'd have to get through the Eurubia Blue Mafia space on the way. So. Yeah. Well, you know. well, yeah well, well, if we did manage to get it, we could start petitioning Frontier to put a new rare there. wonder what it could be. From In, in a cockwang? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The lady please are three thousand. Right. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Um, so maybe. I'll, I'll no, maybe so about it. Are. I'm just looking. So I'm, I'm saying maybe when I'm looking at the path between us and there, and what we'd have to go through. Yeah, yeah. that's it's it's a. It's a long start. way away, yeah, but yeah, what a price! Okay. Um, right, the last one. Um, Volcarius, would you like to cover this one? Uh, because um, the last one is about um, SpaceX have been hired to destroy the ISS. Because they're good at blowing sh- uh, stuff up. <laughs> Ships. And shit. They're good at blowing shit up as well. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I know you were. I thought, I know I thought, you were. Are we after the time yet? Are we after the time yet? There is, yeah, there is no time. Fine. There is no time. The watershed's only on the television. So the well, the last I heard about, I did hear about the ISS being decommissioned at some point. Um, yeah. Although this was like a few years ago, um, and I had didn't hadn't really, I really paid much attention to it. Um, well, I'd forgotten. Of course, think... you don't have access to the script, do you? So <laughs> no, it this is true. No. Yeah, it's just no um, access to the article. Here go, look, here's here's a copy of the article. I'm just whizzing it over to your data pad. There, there we go. Okay, I, I think we open. did. I think we did an article. Well, Volcarius reads up on that. I think we did an article not long ago about decommissioning of the the ISS. Well, the, the contract's now been awarded. But have you have you managed mm. to um, nab that article yet? Yeah, it's on my screen now. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what? When I I don't pay attention to what you're doing when you cover them. So, what, do you just read the text or the headline? Or? Well, what, yeah, what's it all about? It I mean, all we know, all we know at the moment is that Elon Musk is going to smash space stuff. I don't know about Smash. So Na- NASA selected SpaceX to bring down the ISS at the end of its life. Um, what are we doing? They're probably going to burn it up in the atmosphere. Eight hundred forty-three no, million dollars. That's too big for that. It's a rip-off. I'm pretty sure you could. I'm pretty sure you could destroy an ISS for like 
three about, about three feet. Uh, the, the, the difficulty is to make sure that you destroy the ISS and not a long string of ground targets across Europe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the Russians said they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's the size thought... of a football pitch, isn't this thing? Keeping yeah, it yes. In keeping yep. with the Euros at the moment. It's the size of it, yes. A it's... lot of that solar so... panel, so... So, yeah, um, the laboratory remains st structurally sound, but plans need to be put in place now for a disposal. Um, well, okay. Um, without assistance, it would be f eventually fall back down. Yes, it would. It's called That's called atmospheric drag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, an interesting little factless on the uh, size of a football pitch thing. If you uh, folded the solar panels, it would fit quite easily on a medium pad. Wow. Nice. Yeah. It's smaller than a Type 6. So here's the thing. I Plus solar thinking, panels. <laughs> here's the thing I was thinking as well. Could you not disassemble it and bring it down in bits? Well, they, no, they, yeah, they really have discussed that. Isn't that, that. Is, isn't that a good it idea? It wouldn't be worth Cause, it. Because that's the reverse of how it was built, right? Yeah. Well, but you don't, yes, actually have to, you don't actually have to bring it down and <clears> land the bits. You just have to point them towards the earth, earth and give them a push. It wouldn't what? be worth yeah, they... it. It'd be more expensive to bring it there down. There were issues of ownership, of mm. apparently. Yeah. Also, oh. the, the the only vehicle we've ever had that could bring things that back that big back was the space shuttle, and that hasn't flown for quite a while now. Yes. Yeah, but there was there was also who actually owns the bits on it. All these countries put money into it. And I think the Russians are funding it until twenty twenty eight, and the Americans are funding it till mm -hmm. twenty thirty. And there's a case of well, yeah, you know, who's who's going to have? It's the new modules that were interesting. The the, the recent added ones that were interesting. Yeah. Um, and there's a few private ones as well. I now. think yeah, I think the robot arms can Canadian. But where yep. are they going to plop it if they're going to plop it then, Volcarius? Um, well, I was just... So <laughs> it says neither NASA nor SpaceX have released details for the design of the deorbiting tugboat. Um, so, they're going to, so they are going to deorbit it like rather than... It's going to be Mickey Mouse, away. isn't it? Yeah. But if it's Wiley going Coyote. to deorbit... Where's it going <laughs> to... I don't, does the article even say where it's going to land? Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, just keep right, reading. Redu You're about two paragraphs redundant. short. Yeah, controllers will allow... Yeah, I see it. Um, a redundant spacecraft are aimed at a remote location in, in the Pacific, known as Point Nemo. We were going to see called Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that is... No, yeah, that, was, suppose, that was Skylab. Yeah. But I think, uh, well, they're probably politically safer in the middle of the biggest like ocean than in like the South yeah. China Sea, for example. <laughs> That's what they tried with Skylab. Mm-hmm. Here we go. I've put it up on screen for you. Where is Point Nemo? Here we go. On screen right now. It's uh, east of New Zealand and and uh, west of uh, Peru, Chile. No, yeah, a bit of Chile, a bit of Argentina. Yeah, there. all of the above. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it's in between Australia and South America. Yep. yep. And it's cool. the point that's furthest from land anywhere. Mm. Yeah. I think I think the um, in terms of proximity, um, South America and um, New Zealand aren't the consideration. It must be those islands and probably Antarctica. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah. It reckons it's um, uh, two thousand six hundred and eighty-eight kilometers from the nearest land, which is Ducey Island, part of the Pitcairn Islands to the north, Motu oh. Nui, one of the Easter Islands to the northeast, and Maya Island, part of Antarctica to the south. And so that it, it's sort of equidistant it from those three. I like how it was named after a fictitious submarine. Yes. But then, well... Fictitious, yeah. But then a lot of sci-fis ended up reality, though, in, in the same way, like geostationary orbit, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, Nemo, me Nemo means... Nemo exactly, means no one, doesn't it? Yes. The, the, so it there can is be still no one or Because there's no one there? there. Yeah, nowhere point. Um, yeah, because the, there are still people in the industry who call it a Clark orbit. It, yep. it literally most, says most it was saving. named after the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> it also has a less interesting name. It was named after, yeah, it was named after the captain. So it, it, it was previously called the Pole of Inaccessibility. Yes. Apparently. Um, yeah, so there is a northern pole. one, which is the Arctic Pole, located on the Arctic Ocean ice pack. Yeah. And then the southern Pole of Inaccessibility is this Point Nemo. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. There'll be an island nearby. Do you think there's a lot of clownfish in the waters around it? <laughs> so you go finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes. We can look. <laughs> Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. It depends. There's bound to be a lot of pureed clown fish once this thing gets some water. <laughs> but anyway, so they're What's going to plop it there mainly because the margin of error it allows them a lot of room for error. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and apparently, this question is where about they Skylab and they hit Australia, they're going to need that margin of error. Yeah. So, qu question about are they going to have you know, Nemo? Is there going to be some poor fish sitting there going, ow, my head? Apparently, it's relatively lifeless there. It's a location in the South Pacific Gaia which blocks nutrients from reaching the area. And it's so far from mm. land, it gets little nutrient runoff from coastal waters. So, it is relatively oh, okay. lifeless there as well. It's another big swaddly thing full of rubbish strewn about there as well. There's like a big, I, a big rubbish thing in the South Pacific guy. It's just like a big whirlpool of all the crap that's been dumped in the sea. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the South Pacific guy is quite big. You know, it, it takes up a large chunk of the South Pacific. I, I'd imagine mm. the epicentre of it. Um, uh, yeah, this is beneath the seafloor. Marine sediments and surrounding poor waters contain an unusual subsea floor biosphere. Extremely low amounts of buried organic material. Uh, mm. But microbes live throughout the entire sediment column, so maybe microbes would get a headache. Oh, no, the microbes. Yeah. Um, as long as they don't mutate. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's anything to do with junk. Garbage patch. Is there, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. The South Pacific garbage patch is an area of ocean with increased levels of marine debris and plastic particle pollution within the yep. ocean's pelagic zone. It oh, is in the, the South Pacific Gaia. Yes. Uh, it's not visible on satellites and is not a landmass. Most particles are smaller than a grain of rice, which is a lot smaller than a banana. Okay. There we go. It's good that they've put the banana, the yep. banana uh, equivalents in there. It, apparently, it, it's it's more like smog than a patch. Right, okay. Grubby water. And, and those wee ducks that have been floating about for about 30 years. And, and Lego. And the Lego. Yeah, the Lego's all washed up in beaches now, isn't it? Yeah, somewhere somewhere in Cornwall and Wales and things. Cornwall, yeah. 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 Anyway, but well, the ducks the ducks occasionally float past. Quack. Quack. The Hutton Duck, yes. Uh I I think that's it for the space news. I don't think we've got anything else on space news this week. So let's um just do the end of space news before we go off to Probably speak to Volcarius. Hang on a second. Theme tune, please. Right, Volcarius. Briefing room is ready. Ah, uh, oh, so it is. Yeah, so we've uh, <clears throat> we had a couple of decent weeks around Titan Indra. Um, the week before last was absolutely brilliant, with 33 controls gone and not a single alert getting through. Uh, last week took back 21 controls, and with only 11 more to go, we're definitely closing in on the core. And remember, we don't even need all 11, because after the overhaul with patch 18.06, Titan should now go vulnerable at three control. So eight systems is all we need and we'll be hitting the Titan next week. Um, by the way, that is a slight slowdown, and it definitely looks like the difficulty was raised to Titty Nope. We haven't had time to fly out elsewhere to a quiet system and do some formal tests, um, but it looks like controls went up by around 20 to 25% in strength. Um, Spires, something like double. Um, that's really, really difficult to measure, though, because uh, of all the activity there. Uh, we've all studied maths at Imperial Navy Invent Intervention Rescue. We're always watching our own numbers and the effect our actions have on each system. Um, we have confirmed cases of control systems moving more slowly than our actions have caused in previous weeks, which is nothing to do with other commanders there, um, who are there. Um, the point is that the progress results were slightly below projection, even if it was just us. Um, so the fact that there are others helping only makes the deficit larger than what we measured. Um, that said, it also looked like everything picked up pace again a couple of days ago. So given the timing, where in effect Titan Indra is now going vulnerable next Thursday, there are absolutely some hilarious accusations here. My favourite is Night Shift, working with the Thargoids because it's a national holiday coming up. 
Um, I've seen commanders calling it Independence Day. <laughs> In any case, we'll be hitting controls from Friday onwards and watching the results. So anything further there on the strength front, definitely watch the Thargoid War thread on the front Frontier Forum. This week, <clears throat> we have very few alerts around Indra. In fact, we have zero alerts around Indra. Almost all our systems in attack range are on cooldown from being attacked again, and anything which could attack got cleared and recaptured. Not only that, the only attacker this week is the Spire at hit 22350, and that'll probably be gone before the end of the show. So if you're doing alerts, Indra has basically attacked its last, so definitely go and defend the other Titans instead. If you're doing Spire Sites, at least after the show, you'll only have one more to visit, and that's at Ariatis Sector, KR-B, B2-1. Please be warned, the gravity there on Planet 1 is 0.54. So if you're in a Python Mark II and you've dropped to a Class 4, class four shield to fill it with AX weapons, you might want to consider dropping the Stabilizer instead and shielding back up to Class 6. Titan Rescues would progress all remaining systems, but with as few as 11, honestly, I would now start stockpiling rescues from Titan Thor instead and drop those off at the rescue ship in a couple of weeks' time when Thor will get, have all the Counter-Strikes instead. We'll almost certainly be up against the Titan next Thursday. I think this will be it for it. <clears throat> this will be it for Indra, which means if you want to play it safe with the livery rewards, Definitely get your Titan Bomber some time on Sunday, thereabouts, and get your 2 million credits just in case. Um, the Titan has full damage resistance at the moment, so it'll take a few heat vent, heat vent runs to get to 2 million, but to be honest, when that damage resistance pops next week, Indra's Onion Rings are going to drop really fast. Remember, this has been one of the most popular Maelstroms to defend for almost two years now. Probably second only to Tyrannis, I suppose with Oya not far behind. Um, so either secure your <clears throat> rewards on the weekend, or at least get your nanites in position nice and early. And that's it. Thank you very much, Commander Valkarius. So we're, we're trundling along. I mean, there's still no change, effectively. Small little tweaks in terms of the speed of how we're doing things, but there's not been some dastardly plot or any inklings of anything major changing. Just more of the same, just keep going, we'll get it done. Well, the only inklings have been... Um, uh, that same post from Mark, was it from, was it from Arthur who posted that? It I was, he it? does his but, usual... Or it was Paul um, Crowther, it was one of the two. Yeah, so the the Emperor from um, Star Wars turning towards the camera um, image on uh, X, or Twitter, whatever. Yeah, we, so we, yeah, we've we've had some fear mongering basically, but visibly we we haven't had any unexpected controls taken, any massive thirty alert fans again. Um, not that those wouldn't be destroyed <laughs> in a few days. Okay, well, look, thank you very much for the update, and everybody keep on doing it. I think lots of people have been earning their their special decals and bits and bobs for, for their contributions. Yeah, and there are some great screenshots on the forum if you of um, the four-star ones. Um, I've, I saw what there was a brilliant one from Alec Turner. Who was, he, he landed, uh, uh, he had the four-star um, Titan decal, and he, was, he jumped on top of his ship and took a screenshot. It was brilliant. Oh, we'll have to dig that one out for next week and uh, put it on one of your screens, maybe in your briefing room. Right, uh, I'm going to hand over to um, uh, Amelia now, I think. <clears throat> do we have a word of the week? We do have a word of the week, and word of the week this week is Rabalasian. Rabalasian? Yes. What does that mean? It means coarsely hilarious. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Yes, I can. Hutton truckers very much joy enjoy the Rabelaisian entertainments of Gust of the Clown. <laughs> and for those of you who are interested and are watching on our Twitch stream, you can see that the spelling and the meaning will trudge across the headline banner. There we go. Oh, and while they're reading that... What kind of art? What kind of anteater is Michael the Aardvark? Um, um, he's Jeff's cousin, isn't he? He is Jeff's cousin, but that doesn't tell you what yeah. type of Aardvark he is. Yeah, he's Jeff's cousin. A red one. He is an Aardvark angel. He's Michael the Aardvark angel. Uh, Yay! Can we have a, d a dumb tiss, please? 
Um, Bollocks! No, that's what I've got. That'll do! <laughs> that's good that'll do! That's more that. <laughs> I, preferred, I preferred Brian Blessed just shouting bollocks. Bollocks! <laughs> Honestly, I'm I back. think it's more deserving. I'm back! back. I'm, I'm back. back! Right, and now it's time for Flossie with this week's riveting Community Goal News. <clears throat> when the universe is in trouble Bug infestations in the bubble Bubble. Your home stations burn rubble What on earth can we do now? Interstellar Hello, Flossie here with this week's CG News. Well, we weren't here last week, but there weren't any CGs anyway. Uh, the week before there weren't any, um, I, I was only able to tell you about ones that have just finished. And unfortunately this week there aren't any. So I'm afraid I've got nothing to report. No CGs. Hopefully soon. And that's it Flossie for told this week's you what to do. Sorry, I jumped the gun there, Flossie. Yeah, I was did, you say, did, yeah. yeah. You did you? You're going to get banned for that. Well, yeah. I, it was it was it was the you you the the oh. onionists. It was the apology onionists again. We're, 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 it was not the f- apology onionists. Don't you blame them? Yeah, they were. We they were complaining about the apologies for the for the. It was so, it was someone someone over there with fat finger syndrome. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Fingers like a packet of McKellar white sausages. Anyway. And now, following that debacle, it's time to introduce Beetlejuice and Witherspoon with this week's Galnet News Digest. Galnet News Digest, 27th of June, 3310. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Titan Indra is expected to outlast a politician. And there's not much more to say than that. Titan Indra will outlast the unpopular leader of the island of Britain, following slower-than-expected progress in the war. Thargoid Titans, sometimes described as space space lettuces for their ability to outlast politicians, are surrounded by Thargoid-controlled systems that impart to the Titans their power. Indra still has 11 controlled systems and is not expected to lose the popular vote until Thursday next week, with a spectacular implosion on Saturday or Sunday. The leader of Britain, Emperor Rikish Sunhat, is also expected to lose a popular vote on Thursday and is expected to move to California, where he will live in modest retirement as an advisor to Starfleet. Unlike Titan Indra, Premier Sun Hat's support has already imploded. Commanders are reminded to cause as much damage to Titan Indra as they can over the next week to earn the decals and paint jobs that are a reward for getting rid of an unpopular galactic presence. Those on the island of Britain are also encouraged to vote whichever way their beliefs may take them, although if the sorry tale of President-elect Felicia Winter's Pyrrhic victory over allegedly outgoing President Zachary Hudson is anything to go by, Rikish Sunhat might seek to cling on to the levers of power a bit longer. President-elect Winters now seems unlikely to take over as federal president until September, which in England is considered an extension to summer. And as there's nothing much else happening in the galaxy, that's your lot for this week. 
Galnet News. We read the news impartially, so you don't have to. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Beetle Jude and was a spoon. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to admit the seam I've just spotted in this entire show either. Right at this stage. What? Just the one? Just, just the really a... big seam. <laughs> the enormous <clears throat> start recording sticky note. To be fair, oh, yeah, every week, oh, no. every week you tell us to remind you to do it, and we always remind you a totally stupid moment, like as you press a button. And we never reminded you this week, so really, it's our fault, not yours. Well, to be, so to be got, yeah, really, it's, really it's me's yes. fault, and not start again Real, from the yeah. top. <laughs> and I just, I just like to tell everybody, I'm very, very sorry that David's never pressed the record button. It's all my fault. That's okay. We can, we can recover it. We can recover it. Um, yeah. Uh, talking of other, other yeah, seams. Press, we, press we, it we now. Forgot, it'll be fine. We forgot to tell Commander Aiden that it was Greenroom Week, but I've noticed that he's noticed. <laughs> So uh, he's better on his calendar than we are. So I've just oh. grabbed him and dragged him in here. Um, I've got to say he's gone. He's here. Yeah. So we'll we'll do the thing. Who's got the magic? Um, who's first button? I'm on it. Volcaris is magic it? thingy. The magic thingy. Yeah. That's the one. I didn't know it was magic. I've got my fingers on Volcaris is magic thingy. It's all good. No, okay. Dun 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 dun. <clears throat> Apparently, it's me to Aiden. So, Commander Aiden, how have you been? Oh, I've been fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, not so bad. A little tired, but it's not about me, it's about you. What? So, how are you doing? Been up to anything exciting? Um, well, at, at the moment, I'm just emptying my load into Trepan. Of water, that is. Oh, very good. Glad to hear it. So, Lizard's yeah. water as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I realised that I had uh, a few thousand units of, of water on Alvin's Mercy. So I went. That's a lot of water. So I went, okay, well, it's not that many, that many trips in a cutter. So, you know, why not? Um, Sounds fair. So yeah, that that's what I've been doing this evening. Um, yep. Looking at the Type 8 and going, "Core, isn't that a ship?" I think mm. I think I think I know what Amelia is going to going to be doing to that. Hmm. <laughs> I think we all do. Yes. Um, other than that, yeah. Um, life goes on. Um, yeah. Uh, I may be. Changing uh, agencies of the man at some point in the latter stage of the year, but nothing's nothing spectacular. So you get to stick it to the man and still work for the man. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been doing that for the last few years, so yeah. Yeah, it's just which esteemed. Uh, Part of the uh, which esteemed organ will I be uh, part of, as it were? Mm -hmm. And well, neither of the neither. Not Yuri current. Grom. You're not doing power play two with Yuri Grom. No, no, I'm not. You can neither confirm nor deny. No, I don't work for the, I don't work for uh, for that bit. So I can actually confirm that. I'm not going to be working for Grom. Oh, so you can confirm that you can deny. Excellent. Double yes. negative. Because I don't work for uh, Alvin's secret service. That's a good job, really, because he's been stopped from being in places and he'd probably be quite upset at the moment. Yes. This, yeah, and um, I've... I'm glad I'm not in charge because I, you know, 
my, my, you know, the budget doesn't always stretch to uh, new pairs of trousers. Mm-hmm. Well, for when Alvin shows his displeasure by potentially taking by a bite. By chewing out. on things, yes. That was my favourite leg, that was. Yes, but other than that, um, nothing, you know, um, I caught up with, uh, with 21 a couple of times during the month, and other than that, We, we attempted to, to empty the local watering hole of beer, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we as, tried that. As, as is appropriate at the time, yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's about it, really. Um... You have to yeah. see the magic words. For the mug. Yay! For the mug. For the mug. For the mug. 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 Right, Volcarius, interrogate, in, interrogate me here, quick. The apology officer. Yes. I'll tell you everything. Um, <laughs> what we get, get to it. I'm waiting. Get to it. This is me getting to it now. I have been doing a bit of ground combat this week. Oh, um, I, yeah. What, what's that? Um, running at, running about with lasers and, and shooting, you know, shooting people for fun and profit is brilliant. Really enjoy it. I've only been doing the low intensity stuff because I'm a bit scared. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good fun. Good fun. Um, well, it, and there's if, money if to be made. If it's anything like the, oh no, I suppose, yeah, because if it's anything like the space ones, um, uh, you go, once you go to medium, you get spec ops and such. And like, once you get to high, you get two events instead of one. Um, I don't um, know if the, if the low does that at all or if it's just I, more stuff. But... The low does it. The low is pretty straightforward. I don't know about the higher up ones, but the low is pretty straightforward. You go in, you've got a, a number of troops, they've got a number of troops, and if you kill theirs quicker than they kill yours, you win. Well, maybe oh, try and meet, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Flossie knows all about easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's very exciting because there's, there's a wee bit of a uh, kind of, you know, you're still managing your suit power and your ammunition and things like that as well while... You know, while people throw grenades at you and things like that. So you kind of need to learn your way around the base and things. It's usually in a base. So you need to learn your way around the base to find where the, the power supplies are and the ammunition crates and things like that. They're on the map, but, you know, <laughs> um, uh, all the time people are throwing grenades and shooting at you and things. It's great, really good, and quite three-dimensional because yeah. you can get up onto the roofs of buildings and things. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got a goal then. You can try, you try a medium. Yeah, that could be a goal. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, I might try that. I'll and see how it maybe, goes. and is that the one still the ones where you get where you you um, sign up and then a vulture flies you in? Yes, yes. And then yeah. you dangle out the bottom and then they let you go. Can other commanders disable the vulture? I think it's technically possible. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But probably very a bad very idea. Hard. I have. I, I. I caught word of a few naughty commanders doing that with Apex and Stella. <laughs> oh dear. You're just blowing up the yeah. shuttles as they come to take people uh, home. Disabling them. So taking ah. out their taking out their drive. Yeah. <laughs> Outside yeah. the port. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That that is naughty. So yeah, that's that's basically what I've been spending my week my week doing. And I maybe do a bit of mission running there. I used to love and I've not done them in a wee while, the ones where you go to get down and switch the power on in a settlement. Yeah, reactivation. So yeah. is that um now I know I know I've looked into all the war stuff. Um, there are yeah. two types. Of, there are two war-related ones. You get the normal settlement reactivation in a recovery system, and you get the hostile AX reactivation in a control system. Oh, um, yeah. mm. I, I don't. I think I did one of them when they first came out the the AX ones, mm. and it was pretty. It was pretty hard going. Even getting in, there was you get shot at as soon as you stepped outside. So it was a bit dodgy. Yeah, um, that was that was when uh, revenants were revealed, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, it was before revenants. I think it was it was run about the same time though. Um, but the revenant ones, I've done a few of them. You just really need to sneak in and not get seen, um, which is pretty easy because you can see where their where their eye beams are pointing, um, and you don't want you just don't want to get into a combat with them because they just keep more and more of them keep coming. So yeah, that's yeah. that's normally not too bad, but. Um, I like the ones where you go in and then you go, oh look, I, you know, you go in at night time, you can see the the torch beams, the scavengers, so you know where to aim your rockets, um, and it's great fun. You you take all them out and then hopefully no more come as you as you land your ship and things like that, you know. 
Yeah, it's kind of like that at the um, at a spy site actually. If you <laughs> we we what we do, we take rockets over there. We do exactly that. Uh, mm. Although we take enough to overwhelm the banshees first. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, 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 I usually have you taken yeah. on a ban Have you taken on a banshee? No, I'm, I haven't shot the flower people. <laughs> yeah, shot, I, I, you... I don't think I've shot revenants, but I haven't certainly haven't shot the flower people. Um, Revenant, yeah. Well, I, I know some people can snipe revenants. I've I've not done this, but the mm. um, with the banshee, as far as I know, if you see one of those, what you want to do is shield up and then just rush, like bum rush it, mm. um, pro I, from cover if you can, but ultimately get under it, and then you it can't do anything once you're under it. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, that's what I've been doing this week. I've been shooting people and hoping to get into switching bases back on. Yeah. Looking forward and to pillaging the place for profit while I'm at it. <laughs> yeah, profit payment recompense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you have you, to, um... you have to cut a couple of you know you might have to cut the occasional uh, roller shutter open, but it's it's not a big deal. Um, looking forward to ECM. Uh, I'm not going to ECM this year. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how you very heartfelt. Oh no, how sad. Move on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going this year. Yeah, boo you yourself, you! Boo! Boo! boo. I want to see... miss hanging out with you. If you see boo backwards, it's oop. Boob! Anyway. Yeah, the B on the end is boob. Boob! <laughs> uh, don't say, don't say no, that. Dead meat's not here, you can't I'm say that. Yeah, I'm waiting for dead meat to react. Yeah, we'll come rushing in. I thought that was him arriving. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it for me. It's a uh, for the mug. Just dragged the... Um... Little grey in the Oh, we have a little grey. Oh, we have to we have to mess up the mess up the the list now. <laughs> no, no. Unless you just jump in and talk to him right now. No, there's a new oh, attack on the end. There's a new attack on the there end. We go. The little grey, don't panic. Yeah, we've we've right. ta we've tacked on an interrogation of the little grey. There we go. Um. So now, Flossie. Right, so it's me to speak to Amelia. Hi, Hi Flossie. Hi. Uh, how have you been this week? Pretty good, actually. I've been doing real things instead of video gaming. Oh, right. Real things. Um, yeah, real things. On Sunday, I went to a, a local board gaming group and Ooh. I did a whole day of board gaming, which okay. was so cool. We played a game called Terraforming Mars, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on Monday, we went in Monday evening, we went to another board gaming group, oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> which we played Catan. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and and then just yesterday, I've been setting up a new RPG, TTRPG roleplay. Oh, oh, right. Um, with a new group that consists of people that I met in those board gaming groups. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, been doing real stuff, local really? stuff with local people. Oh, great! <laughs> it's good way to meet people, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I haven't done it in a very long time. I don't go out much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like outdoors. It's full of people. Mm, I know what you mean, yes. <laughs> the resolution's better than video games anyway. <laughs> it's true. You go outside, the re resolution's not that great. Yeah. Nah. Although the 3D effects are quite impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think my eyes are set on either medium or low settings. But yeah. So I haven't been video gaming much, um, no. but I have been gaming. Well, as long as you've had fun, that's the main thing. Oh yes, a lot of yeah. fun. And I'm so looking forward to DaveCon. Oh, um, yes. Not DaveCon. <laughs> sorry, not yeah, Dave sorry. Con. I'm so looking forward to not DaveCon. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't got, I haven't checked an update on on the the, the Dave quota. I ought to do that, I suppose, shouldn't I? You, you still have to send me an email. Or or a message or something with with oh no stuff. We, it, it is still it is still uh, it's still Dave Con though it's in danger of becoming Mark Con. I thought it was Ooh. not Dave Con. Oh sorry no it is uh, we have we we have ten people who may or may not be called Dave at not Dave Con. <laughs> um, closely followed by four possibly called Marks but it's not going to get close to to being da Dave so it's, it's it's still not Dave Con but that's the most frequently used name con <laughs> right <laughs> uh, if yeah. you're not confused yet you've obviously not been paying attention 
Yes. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> oh, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that and seeing you all. Yeah. Uh, except Mia, of course, who's being a bitch and not going. Sorry, I'm not Thank allowed you. to say that. Women, no, it is, it is late No, enough. you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> it's late enough. We're allowed to say bitch now. Yeah. You can even say motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you still can't say motherfucker. Yeah, you can. Um, oh, right, that's it. That's us off air. Good thing I didn't record it. I can beat all this out. There we go. <laughs> that's what she said. Anyway. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll just say for the mug. Okay, thank you for the mug. And you, Lisso Breaker. Hello. Hello. Are you off again to eat sausage? Uh, yes, I'll be back there on Sunday again. Oh, and which, which airport are you going from this time? Uh, Manchester to Frankfurt. So, yes, oh. I'm flying to, to France via Germany in the middle of the Euros in Germany. It'll be fine. Absolutely. And yeah. with power cuts in Manchester at the airport. Oh, don't even go there. <laughs> Just, yeah. No, you don't want to go there. Um, well, uh, la- last time I flew in 12 hours before those power cuts, <laughs> I was... Very, very relieved it was 12 hours before, because otherwise I would have been stuck in God only knows where. Or, or on a bus to go to some other airport. Well, I'll, I'll be in an airport as well on Sunday, just a different one. But I'll talk about that later. Um, but I won't wave mm-hmm. to you as you fly over, because you'll be going over before I fly. So there you go. Yeah. But we'll have to so get yes, Flossie I'm, to, I'm um, to, to track you on flight radar or something. Mm-hmm. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll wave at her from flight <laughs> or, or radar Robbie, as I, uh, long way, as I go yeah. past. Yeah. yeah, I don't like Flossie, do She's a bit... She's well, a tail gunner. She... <laughs> <laughs> you start hearing daka, daka, daka noises. Daka, 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 daka. daka. Yeah, and scarily, I'm flying Lufthansa, so it only takes one syllable oh, to change, and yeah. that, that's just bad news. Yeah. But other, other than that, have you been flying at all, or have you just been recuperating from your various international man of mystery I've been trips? mostly sleeping, to be honest, this week. Hmm. I've had a few too many weeks of travel and a few too many days of travel and a few too many long hours spent in airports. And, I've just and it's been hot. Sort of cla- clapsings and sleeping, yeah. And it's, it's hot and there's lots of beer and good food. And it, oh, it's, it's terrible, it is. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, for those of you who live in parts of the world where, where they, they claim it's hot, hot, I don't know, like Texas's and things, we don't do air conditioning here. So hot means ick. Hmm. So, yeah, it's technically been hotter in Toulouse than in Macclesfield, but um, it hasn't felt that way. It's definitely felt worse when I've been at home. Yes, because our ho- homes are built for being hot, not for Yes, keeping they're designed it cool. to keep the heat in, not keep it out. Yes. But that's just life when you're a Brit, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking forward to the election next week, and then, of course, I will be in Toulouse on election day. Look at you. Oh, you're yeah. part of the increase of uh, double-digit increase in postal votes, then, yes? I am indeed, yes. It's already yeah. been um, signed and sealed and sent. Oh, I, I took great delight in, in getting my postal vote and then writing a poem on it. <laughs> I'm quite looking f- what I wrote on mine. I, I have a I'm, spoiled postal vote. <laughs> Didn't hmm. quite say I'm you quite looking rubbish, forward. To, <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to going. I think it'll be good to go. I like going. Don't think you're missing out on the election fever, though, Litho. The French have got oh. an election on as well. Oh, but believe me, I am aware. But are the Liberal Democrats winning in that area? Because they seem to be winning everywhere else, according to the signs. What, in France? Of yeah, of course. They, everywhere says Liber- Liberal Democrats winning here, everywhere. Probably in France, too. Mm. <laughs> They're probably using some degree of dodgy charts. Yes. Probably in a nice PowerPoint deck. Right. So, yeah, for me, it's probably just uh, for the mug, I think. Okay, and I think next is me to speak to Flossie. How are you, Flossie? Hello, Mia. Yes, now I heard what sounded like the voice of experience when I was talking about shooting things. (laughs) Oh, I just love the compact zones. The (laughs) old ones. I don't like space. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. So, and um, I don't know if you saw, well, I think you did see the post that uh, Psycho Cow put on Facebook. Yes. Asking for help with the Belgarquid brothers to keep onesie. 
So I thought, mm-hmm. right, I'm going to help out with that. And Excellent. although I didn't really earn an awful lot of uh, money on that, yeah, I hope in some small way it helped. <laughs> <laughs> Did but you do was... mediums or highs? Because I know you normally go with a team, don't you? They were doing high in open. Oh, so, <laughs> oh yeah, ultra brave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I did really anyone else? It. Did anyone else show up for the the enemy? I mean, no, no, no. Um, no. Didn't see any commanders there. Okay. Apart from apart from my was friendly, but uh, yeah, yeah. But it was just the chance that you could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fun. Uh, yeah, that fun. it was. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And so, what I used, I was to run straight onto the rooftops. Yeah. And. Uh, Keep, oh, do you shoot down at them? keep out the way and just sort of sniper as I get the opportunity. <laughs> well, wait, my, yeah, use... my rocket launcher. <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay. Yeah. See, I see a bunch of them have just been dropped to find me what the rocket launcher. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure you can call it sniping when you're using not, yeah, rocket launcher. That's not yeah, it's not sniping well, a rocket launcher. Well, no, maybe not sniping, but you know, I don't yeah. know what the technical terms are. I'm I don't. I don't even think that's a technical term. I think that's just one of those <laughs> things. You go, it's not really sniping, is it? Boom! I don't but, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you use you yeah. like to use the rocket launcher. Have you got it all kitted out? Have you got it upgraded and things? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got a scope on it. Um, oh, it's sniping then. Yeah, yeah. It's, got, got a scope it's, on it's, it. a, it's a long way. It's got a scope on it. Yeah. Yeah. I see them. I see them coming off the ship at the opposite side of the, the <laughs> settlement. Yeah. You're, you're spawn camping. Four them. kills at once. You know. Yep, spawn camping. Exactly yeah, you are. You are spawn, you're, you're the worst, Flossie. I swear. Well, not, not all the time. Just if I get yeah, the just most of the time. Sometimes the rockets run out. She has to go and shoot them with an actual gun. No, she just reloads. Yeah, uh, yeah. The thing is, if, if I run out of ammo, I, I can see the ammo things on the map. Yeah. I go to where they are on the map, but can I get the, yeah, the thing to come I, up? I get caught with that sometimes. And it's sometimes they're just... above you or below you, and sometimes they're inside when you're outside and things look yeah. like they're next to your door. Yeah. Well, I, I come to them, I can see them, but I can't mm. get the interactive bit to come up. No, uh, okay. So the, the last few times I tried it, was, it worked, but uh, no, I'm yeah. not very good at it. I always hope that I have enough to keep. And if, if I'm in a group with good players, yeah. then it, the, it doesn't really last long anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, then it's cost us me, uh, my yeah. health. Me, I keep uh, my batteries. Oh, I yeah. Keep, I keep a couple of spare batteries on me all the time. So it's just a quick push of a button. Mm-hmm. I don't have to go looking for the... Uh, yeah, for the charging points. Charging points. Yeah. And you never get your cable with you when you need it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never find I mean... the right charging cable. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... So, I, you know, I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a nice change. Yeah. And uh, I'll definitely do it again. Yeah. I learned the hard way that when they drop you into a combat zone, it automatically switches your shield on. Because yeah, what, I, yeah. what I did was immediately switch mine off and thought my shield was on and run about for a while until somebody <laughs> shot me and killed me. <laughs> at least at least the shields, the batteries seem to last longer in the combat zones and with the shields on than they do anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be okay. Aye. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you keep having shields on any other time and it goes to the battery like water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but plus yeah. because your suit will be all modded as well. Mm, what's that? Your suit. Your suit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, will be all modded as well. Yeah. Well, I was on my main Flossy account, which has all the, the G5 mods on everything. The deadly so, do does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. None, yeah of, none of my other commanders do, so that's the only <laughs> one I use. The only one I use for on foot combat. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same. I've got an assault rifle and a laser rifle fully upgraded, and I've got my, my three suits upgraded, and that's yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Because once you got them, you don't really need a lot else. My maverick for the you know for settlement stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I have the silence option for both indoors and outdoors, so oh, I can't hear me shooting. Yeah. yeah. Inside I, or outside. I've got the. I think from my maverick suit, I've got the the night vision. And... I've got night vision on all of them. Yeah, I've got night vision on all of them. I had night yeah. vision. I did the quiet footsteps. Mm. For sneaking um, around. 
Yeah. I've got, I think, the extended power supply and the big backpack. Yeah, I've got a big backpack. That's one of yeah. the first things I've got. <laughs> Aye, because you, you need that for robbing stuff. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, it's good. I, I'm looking to get back into those kind of mission, mission yeah. those, uh, restart missions, you know? Yeah, I might do a few now and again. <laughs> yeah. It's good that we don't need the uh, the power things anymore, isn't it? The yeah. well, oh, what are they called? The power yeah. distributor. Power regulators. Power regulators. Thank regulators. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I've had a few of them lately as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you get now that you don't need them, you get loads. Oh yeah, no, we don't need them. <laughs> I should do one of my other commanders, really, but uh, yeah. I don't think I face all that again. No, no, I know. <laughs> I know what you mean. You I know, so... my, my one in Colonia hasn't has hardly got anything, so that's why I've been tending not to do yeah. foot stuff up there. Mm, okay. Yeah. I'll see if I can upgrade them there. I don't know. Yeah, could do. <laughs> well, you could, you could send your new your main commander out to dump stuff for them to pick up. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to get them to meet up first. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm working at how to do it, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, anything else? Oh, uh, other than that, um, I've been doing a lot of cross-stitch. <laughs> where's, where's the latest one? I'm doing a sampler for the uh, for the anniversary, our golden wedding anniversary. Oh, nice. That's this year? Uh, yeah. Wow. It's, it's actually on the 10th of August. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so that's that's ECM time. Yeah. Yeah. Is so are you and Robbie going to ECM? We then? are, yes. Oh, yeah. there you go. So there I'm go. hoping to get this finished for then. Yep. But, oh. but you're not. I'm hmm? not. Yeah, I'm no. not because I'm because oh, I'm a bitch apparently. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no apparently about it, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah. is Derek going along this year? What? Is Derek going this year? No, he's not going this year. He's no. not. Ah, okay. No. So just the no. two of you. That would be romantic. Yeah, just the two of us, yeah. Ooh, just with the olden days. It'd be <sighs> romantic. <laughs> 50 years, I can't believe it. Yeah. See, you've gone from you've gone from ham radio festivals to video game festivals now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 When we first when when we first got married, it was all amateur radio stuff. I remember seeing fact, an article. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was you that shared it, but there was a picture of you and uh, you and Robbie at a uh, ham radio festival. I think that might have been your honeymoon. Yes, when we went to... <laughs> <laughs> the first day of our honeymoon, we went to a radio rally. Was that 1974? Um, yep. Yeah, see, I remember all this stuff. And it was in it was in October. Yes. And... Uh, Oh no, August. The, the, the magazine yeah, it was would October. Yeah, it would be in August. Yeah. The magazine was in October. And, yeah. Well, obviously, the magazine was in August. And <laughs> we went to the Radio Rally and uh, we were just cooking something. We had, you know, we went camping and yeah. uh, just cooking something. And this photographer came up to us uh, from the Shortwave magazine. Mm -hmm. And we've met him quite a few times and got quite friendly with him. So he, he recognised us and came over to have a chat with us, you know. Yeah. And uh, we told him we just got married the day before. So, oh, he had to get a photograph. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an article in itself. That is an yeah. article in its own. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. 50 years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know. So we're, we're headed, we didn't know where we were going to go. We just headed down the motorway after the wedding and yeah. we stayed overnight in a. Uh, a hotel at uh, Wakefield, I think it was. Ooh. Which we travelled round and round looking for somewhere and ended up the first place we saw. Yeah. <laughs> and then we headed on further towards the south and uh and we said, I was thinking there's there's a radio rally on tomorrow. Did <laughs> yes, yes, we'll go, I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you did. Yeah. Oh, that's and then fantastic. After that we went down to the southwest. Well, yeah. it rained all the time and our tent leaked, so we ended up coming home halfway through yeah. the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, fun times. Well, them were the days, yeah. Oh, yeah. What kind of car did you have then? Oh, well, he used to work for um, Granada Television Rentals. Oh, yeah. So he had a company car. Ooh. Um, 
I think then it was an orange Vauxhall Viva. Oh, Vauxhall Viva is um, awesome. Hmm. And uh, I remember one rally he went to, he parked up, and we came back to the car later. Um, and there was an identical identical <laughs> car next to it, yes. also Granada, with the next registration. No way! One number yeah. up? One number, yeah. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's uh, fantastic news. Hmm. So, yeah, really yeah. looking forward to that. Awesome. Anyway, I don't want to hog the channel. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have to see the magic box then if you want so to I've go. got to say, for the mug. For the mug. And that means I'm due to speak to one of the ten possible Daves going to the <laughs> next not DaveCon. Ah, there, there are seven Davids and three Daves, you see. Ah. Anyway, I, hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah, n not bad, not bad. Bimbling along, as they say. Looking forward Bimbling. to going overseas for for holidays for the first time in mm -hmm. ages and ages and ages and ages on uh, on Sunday. Nice. Uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, planning on driving out into the desert and doing some um, astrophotography. Very nice. Photos uh, ar around happened. the equator, off the west coast of Africa, you know, it, where it's dark and you can actually see stuff. So you're going to post all these photos? If I get any decent ones, yes. Uh, you should post them in the Hutton group so that everyone can see. Yeah, I can point a little arrow and say, look, there's Hutton. And see see <laughs> whether we can cool. actually see Alpha Centauri, or at least the direction of from there. I'm and the Pleiades. The, the, we we the can shake, is... shake our fists at the sky and shout, funk you, to Thargoids, <laughs> especially for Valkarius. I'm guessing the light pollution out there is virtually nil. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you're going to be able to take pictures of the entire galaxy if it's that dark? Well, the bit we can see, yes. Uh, I don't know which yeah. direction. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've never I've never done um, astrophotography from that particular um, part of the world. I've only ever done it from sort of dark skies areas from uh, up, up here. So I'll have to work out which bits of sky. You'll see more of that bit of the sky. So, yeah, it, it could be interesting. That that sounds like it's going to be really cool. Hopefully, we picked a date with a with a a bit of the evening with a moonless night as well. So I'll have to double double check. But I'm there for two weeks, so we, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, find a, a a decent evening and go ooh at the sky. No, nice. they, they they actively ban well they 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 ban anything that gives off light like mobile phones and all sorts. So you don't. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Vision. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's going to be quite cool. Um. I've been busy, busy programming, get more programming, getting this app working and things. I, I had a cunning idea working? for DaveCon. Uh, it, it's it definitely yeah, it's out there in people's hands. Mr. Pond, if you remember, Mr. Pond, he's been mm -hmm. testing it and he says, "Well, it, it just works, doesn't it?" So it's sort of almost it's, underwhelming. It's not, you, yeah. That sounds like Dave Sean. <laughs> well, it, it, it's sort of sort of underwhelming when it just works. It's sort of satisfying, but sort of underwhelming when it just works. And uh, is this the cunning plan? Oh no! There's another cunning plan. This was a vulcarius related cunning plan. Is it so cunning you can cut your teeth on it? It's so cunning if you stuck a tail on it, it'd be a fox. You Ooh. beat me to it. <laughs> hey. Um, well, I was I was contemplating, contemplating uh, Valkarius. doing something mm -hmm. different for the passes for ECM for this year, and actually doing little pin badges. And then it occurred to uh, me the diameter of the pin badge is perfect. For an NFC tag. Uh, what's that? Uh, one of these, you tap your mobile phone on it, things. And it can call up. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, unfortunately, are, you, are you putting two and two together and coming up with five? Um, no, I'm being very lost because I, I, I don't. So you remember you I've were talking about the, reports... handing out codes. Well, <clears throat> I was for that, I was just kind of talking about um, if, like, a like a day or two days or her, like like before the event there's like a list of um uh, of like the the codes and badge names um it would help and i the the unrelated idea i had well um, i was like contemplating have... whether i could encode something in an nfc chip or actually on the badge yeah that that's like so i've got a thing that purports to be a mobile phone um it would be as well if it was like a 
like a pe- like a, a calendar and an alarm clock and I had a flip phone. Like I don't use it for anything else. <laughs> well, okay, but I'm talking for ninety percent of the attendees, you see. Oh, it was just an idea. That was all. It just just so happens that the badge format I'm thinking about for this year is exactly the same size as being able to put an NFC tag in the badge, so people can tap themselves, you see, and get their code. I was just thinking out loud. Yeah. Uh, well, um, for me, it was more a case of um, um, well, it's not not authentication. Um, or no, yeah, kind of user authentication. Um, like if I'm offering downloads for something, someone would be able to punch in the um, their badge number and badge name, um, and that should be sufficiently identifying. Uh, yeah, we can we, we can we can we yeah. can do something with that. It was it was, I was just shortcutting the process with technology, because then if it was able to go have a a unique link encoded in there, which then just on the website called up a page on their phone, you see, which had that oh, code. Maybe. Because then it effectively preloads a URL with the, um, the 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 name and the code. Yeah, um, that certainly would, would would be one way. Like, yeah, if that URL, if we agree on the URL format, <laughs> that would be one way to prefill it. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just calls up their one, saying, "Hello, Vantian, here's your code." Yeah, or your download. Yeah. Or, or your download. Yes. It was an idea. That was all. I was just messing around with ideas on the technology. I thought if I go more basic on the badges, can I make the more basic badges more cunning, you see? Or I can just embed a link to a special effect and hearing dogs video on there. Which would be quite if cool. there are if there are multiple things, um then probably it's best to set up like a like a hub page. Um so so you you, you bit the badge or whatever you do and then it, it brings up a like a well, like a hub with all the link total links that you want to include to ECM Absolutely. related things. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I was just thinking about that. That was all. I might do something like that. I might. I do, I'll have to talk to the, the rest of the team. But yes, is there any more tickets left? Uh, there's a there's a handful left. We are we are sub twenty before we hit absolute squeezy. Need a shoehorn and grease. Right. Okay. Left. So, for anyone curious or who anyone anyone who hasn't got a ticket left, the Web address is on our Twitch headline. Yep, uh, elitecommunitymeet.info. Um, yeah, basically a, a bunch of elite players get together and mysteriously money ends up in the charity tin and we all play games. Um, it's much more involved than that. It sounds really simple, but no, it's, there's a lot <clears> more And, and beer disappears. I'm trying to find a five metre by five metre room. Because we do have an offer for a company who does uh, VR escape rooms. Oh. But I have to find a five metre by five metre space with walls. A cupboard. A cupboard, yes. If I can find that, then there is a cunning plan. But I've got to find one at the moment. But um, So cunning, you could also pin a tail on that? No, this one is more weaselly than foxy, this one. Right. Yes, it's a greasy weasel end of the cunning end of things. So yeah, we're into the sort of like, what cool stuff can we do? So we're sort of through the basics, the event's happening, there's lots of stuff, and we're into what cool extra stuff can we do this year? We are trying to talk to Ed Lewis about whether, you know, anything Planet Funk related could be there. Uh, we do have, I had an interview with um, Babster, you know Babster, you know, Babster of the Babster Arcade and retro side of things. He's been at many a LaveCon. Anyway, I did an interview with him on yeah. his podcast earlier in the week, and he is involved in a new game which he would like us mm-hmm. to showcase. And I've said, of course! We'll even put it on the big screen and stream it and stuff. So there's a few little, little bits and pieces of things you've never seen before coming along to uh, ECM. Oh, we'll be streaming it again. Oh, yeah, we'll probably be streaming it. And then, then just for little Gray's benefit, I slapped up... A, oh, I've had a cunning idea on the streaming and just slapped it in the Helpers channel minutes ago while while, um, while, while I was inserting seams into the show, um, which which might allow us to multi-host things with us and Hutton and ECM and maybe even Lave at certain points. Oh, we're not inviting them, are we? Oh, no, they're doing they're doing something from the stage. They're doing... Yeah, because they're four-fifths of hey, Lave Radio, are they? Hey. Um, so four fifths of Lave Radio are there, and they'll, they'll be doing something from the stage uh, at some point during the day. Um, there are rumours. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, whether these rumours are allowed to be talked about or not. I'm not sure I can talk about these rumours yet. Better safe than sorry. You sound just like half. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I haven't got a Sally to slap me down. So, um, oh, so uh, better safe than sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, um, well, it might involve music. But anyway, that, that's all I can say. And not just the Hutton Squeeze box this time. But uh, it might or might not involve music. Mm. It might or might not involve LCU. But I don't know whether that's, that's, that's immediately thing. what I was thinking. I was dreading that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't be mean to oh, poor LCU. Singing LCU. happy birthday to him. Just bring no. a roll of gaffer tape or a ball gag or something, and then we'll have him on stage. All I'm going to say is, it's yeah. one or the other. It's yes. either LCU or it's music. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I, I don't know what you're all talking about. I think LCU is melodious. Melodious? No, that's melodious, you think. <laughs> <Melodious. laughs> yes. Oh dear, poor LCU. Um, so so yeah, I mean, other than doing sort of lots of programming and um, I don't know, making making two million lines of code work with new versions of things and all sorts. And what do you mean those includes don't work anymore? Oh, it's .NET eight. Oh bother that kind of coding this week. Um, yeah, and a bit of a sale on HCS and vouchers for million pound off that kind of thing. Well, it's not million pound off, but it's um, uh, some money off stuff. A squillion pound off? A squillion pound off. Well, not quite a squillion. A bajillion it's, um, pound off? It's about 30% off. Okay. I, I, I suppose nice. I, I, I ought to tell people what the, the, the code is. Well, do you want to put the code across the screen, you see? Because if you were to happen to go to the HCS store and type in the coupon code in big letters, big savings, all one word, it chucks 30% right, I'll, I'll... off. There we go. Can you can you write that out? I can't be bothered. But the word big savings, yeah, I, could, I can write that out, yes. But hcsvoicepacks.com. <laughs> uh, you have to you have to spend you have to spend money. I, th I think you have to spend a. Uh, oh, it's, it's about four packs worth, but it gives you thirty percent off, kind of. Um, if if anybody wants that, that expires on uh, at the weekend at some point. But big savings, thirty percent off when you spend fifty quid. Done by the Paul over at HCS. Uh, mm. Let me let me see if I can. Uh, if I send you a link you to a link? tweet, I was well. Yeah. Um, I can link you to the tweet which contains the word. How about that? Okay. Um, that sounds good. Here we go. Ta-da! Tiddlypom. I'm going to put that in the chat. There we go. So, yeah, we'll be doing sort of that kind of thing. There we go. Um, there, there's a there's a tweet. Okie dokie. There we go. Um, so, yeah, we've been, been doing that and doing the programming and all sorts. And I'm about to start digging back into Microsoft Flight Sim for its new version coming later in the year. All right. And try and making the API work and that that kind of stuff. And flying spaceships and looking at type eights and yeah. Stuff. But I'm gonna take a two week break. I'll be writing while I'm on, on the beach. So I will be submitting article stuff. Especially for you. Especially for me. Uh, well you're gonna be button pushing. Uh what what when? Next week. N next week. Yes. Thursday. And my but my buttons are not working yet. Oh no! You've got to wait. But 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 Litho's too busy eating sausage, and and I'm going to be um, <laughs> in, in a in, in, in on a beach somewhere. Oh, okay. Um, any chance, uh, Litho, that we could get together and I could fix my buttons? Um, <coughs> week off. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> no. I'm um, having the so. in-laws tomorrow. Then I'm kind of like. We Why we might have to have a wee <coughs> cough uh, next week. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So tune in next week <laughs> for the test well, cards. We won't be here for, for reruns. <laughs> we'll do it a bit like Dave. Was it TV Channel Dave? We'll just do reruns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have everything in the four hour cycle and just let it run automatically. Or just play just play the Flossy theme tune endlessly for an hour and a half. And, you know, do yeah. whatever what, what, Flossy. I'm doing it. it. I'm doing what Flossies do. Whatever Flossy. You know, if we do that, I bet we would get. Yeah. You'll yeah. bet there'll be a CG next week and nothing to advertise it on. You can guarantee. Oh. You can guarantee. If we played Flossy's theme tune back to back for four hours, I bet you anything we would get more views than what we normally get. <laughs> oh, harsh. Hey, we'd get more likes. There'd be fewer scenes. I'll tell you that for free. But other than, other than that, Amelia, that's a for the mug from me. Okie dokie. Thank God for that. Ah, uh, sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Let's that means to it is me to Vulcarius. So, Vulcarius, what you been up to? Oh, quite a few things. Been mm -hmm. in game at all? 
Yes, quite. <laughs> you, uh, obviously, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're um, <clears throat> yeah, we yeah, we're, we're hitting kind of control after control around Indra mm -hmm. um, with a spreadsheet and like a our little mission log. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot more relaxed now that they're uh, after the um, after the overhaul. Um, there's kind of something for everyone to do now, and Good. definitely um, a lot of commanders who like. So there's been a sneaky change, um, which I don't think was mentioned anywhere. But it's, um, the all the ports uh, in a in a previously populated control system, um, they mm -hmm. have conflict zones around them. Like yeah. an invasion would, now, apart yeah. from being able that you can't rearm. Um, but of course, that means everyone, we don't have any invasions, but everyone has been dropping onto planetary ports in the control systems and completing them really quickly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, our efforts kind of, yeah, it feels more like everyone's doing something now instead of just a few. So, that's good. 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 Keeps the player base um, happy. Oh, and I um, and when it was mentioned in the show, just uh, so for ages now, I've been standing in front of that hollow thing. You know how you got that video loop right now that says Adder. Yeah. I've been standing in front of it, and I cannot see a Python two. That said, I also can't see a Viper, an Eagle, um, any of the superpower ships. Like, so it's it's missing quite a few. Boo boo. Personally, they I think to... they don't show a Type 9 enough. They need to upgrade their hollow tables. Boo, boo. Oh, pick it off. <laughs> um, although th there are, um, there are, had, like, but the billboards on the wall, with, on like those rotating billboards, do show the Python too. Yeah, you think they'd be selling it at every opportunity? Push the adverts out there. Oh, they're not saying it here. No, they 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 have only got <laughs> they've only got eleven ships here, and um, they still no, have. No, no, no. I, I don't mean at the shipyard. I mean FDEV. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a that that's a clever idea, actually. Oh, little Gray's got to go. Oh well. Good night, little Gray. Good night, little, Good night, little Gray. Good night, little Gray. Oh, we lost little Gray. Well, it's late. Oh, it's a lot later oh, than we were just are. just about to talk to Little Grey. Should we do a quick, 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 quick yeah, few you should, seconds? You should. You should, yeah. Oh. Uh, you... Couple of seconds. Or at least give us a for the mug. Sure, why not? Are you there, Little Grey? I am. Can you not hear me? Oh, we can now, yes. We can now. We can now. No! <laughs> So we're just going. We're going to cut Volcarius off. Pause on Volcarius. Push the pause button. Quick, catch little Grey before you have to run. I, th I think it was Amelia interrogating uh, you. Thanks. Dead quick. The super speedy version. So little Grey. The super speedy version. What'd you do? The super speedy version is, I, <laughs> I am no longer doing the PA. Sort of, I'm doing it, not doing it. Uh, the ECM Dave Con, not Dave Con. So I'm now hopping out with other things that I'm not quite sure what the other things are yet. And in the meantime, I've not played in-game because I broke my Land Rover hauler machine and now it needs to be fixed and it's not going well. Oh no. What happened? It failed the MOT and we nearly went on to two pages. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Does this mean a uh, complete... New vehicle. I when when <laughs> I challenge you to find anything that's thirty eight <laughs> years old and still on the road in as good condition. Does so that mean, no, does she's that, getting fixed. <laughs> does that just mean everything's broken on it? She's no, definitely just, just everything that matters. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's definitely crunchy. Let's put it that Ooh. way. <laughs> Dang. But it's it's fine. I've invested in a new uh, <laughs> like melted the, wire like injection the, box. I like the way you say that. You're like, it's fine. <laughs> oh, fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's always fine. Everything's Everything fine. will be fine. fine. I will melt the it's metal fine. onto it oh, and it'll be fine. We're all fine over here. Nothing wrong. Sure, How have you been? Sure there's another octave <laughs> in the apology well, it, it, officer. It's the, it's the old <laughs> adage, isn't it? If your Land Rover doesn't have an oil leak, send it in for repairs. 
Your Fine, missus run out of oil. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is if it ain't broken, dip it with it until elaborate. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I absolutely love them. But um, yes, the number I've had to have my head under the bonnet or welding things or something over the years. Yeah, <laughs> oops. This evening's task was refurbishing the rear axle, and every single bolt I've tried to take off has gone mm, snap. They're like, yeah, great. Just, so just I've drilled many holes. Land Rovers don't leak oil; they're only marking their territory. <laughs> I mean, you know all of these. You, you've got live life. No, hang on. Whatever it is, honk scoop jump. <laughs> honk scoop jump. Refill the oil. Like one life, live it. Written across your forehead or something. <laughs> something. Like is that. it love life? Is it love live laugh or something? Love land lover. Live love. Live life. Like, I don't know. It's the kind of thing that I kind of try to avoid entering into my house. <laughs> yes, Land Rover, where you use the ice scraper on the inside of the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> At least two times on the journey when you go to work, because <laughs> when you breathe on it, it freezes again. <laughs> Absolutely. Love them. Anyhow, Love them to bits, I, I literally. Will, literally. I will. <laughs> It literally has. I'm going to have to trailer it home from work kind of level of needing fixing. But anyway... So you need a Land Rover Rover with a trailer to trailer your Land Rover on the trailer home? I have the shame of being towed on a trailer by a Toyota. (laughs) Anywho, I'm going to say for the mug at that. For the the, the mug and 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 the mug! Bye-bye! Wait, uh, um, unpause... Unpause, there we go, on Vulcarius. And where were we? So Vulcarius. Yeah. And speaking of cars, um, I bought one of those as well. Ooh, what you get? What you get? Skoda Superb. Ooh, or, very nice. Or as um, so one of my friends, well, well, one of somebody I know calls it the <clears throat> Super B. <laughs> 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 somebody who doesn't know that Superb is an English word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, There's always the, one. Yeah, so I had a had a um, had a, a golf mm-hmm. um, from a two thousand seven golf, and the front part of the exhaust f- just separated from the rear part of the exhaust, um, and the bracket that's supposed to stop it doing that is all corroded. Um, so now it has some it has some jubilee clips holding it together. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that, 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 that's not ideal, really, in a car. <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's not in the car. But... <laughs> no, it, not anymore. <laughs> One good speed but, bump, and it might be. Well, uh, well, yeah, it was like a pop. A pop. You could shove the it was the exhaust bits together, and it would kind of stay together. But like a pothole would knock it apart. So, mm-hmm. um, but in, in any case, um, I thought um, I'd considered something like a um, like a either like a Vauxhall Insignia or a Skoda Superb for a while, mm-hmm. um, and. I didn't want to. It was the MOT was coming up, and I really couldn't be asked to buy a new exhaust. Um, mm. So I thought, sod that. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's a good time to not spend many hundreds, and if it was right at the front, it could be over a grand for new exhaust. So, um, yeah, why would you just before an MOT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a new chair as well. That's very nice. I've got lots of new stuff. Oh, sounds like a good a good month in there, uh, Shavel Carriers. Or is it the old seat from the golf? Uh, Did you no, just take it, your driver's seat out of the golf and call it a chair? Uh, no, it's a secret lab Titan. Ah, right. I'm sitting in a secret lab Omega at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they're good. I've got uh, a mate to work with. He's about five foot three. He's got the Titan as well. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Just, hopefully I know it really comes well. in multiple sizes. Oh, right. I was going to say the Titan comes in multiple sizes, so hopefully he's got he's got one of the smaller ones. No, he's got the big one. <laughs> well, okay. Do you, do you remember <laughs> Ronnie Corbett from the two Ronnies? Um, oh, I want yeah. one now. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. It's yeah. not the one about. <laughs> oh, you, are you talking about the um, the the upper middle and lower class sketch or? No, he's no, big chair that he used no. to sit in, in the yeah, two when he, when he used to sit in the chair and tell, tell shaggy dog stories. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah, this, um, it's the good chairs. Enough though. at a tangent every few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the good chairs, though, the secret labs. 
So, um, yeah, as I um, as I alluded earlier, um, the uh, my little um, puzzle game's coming along quite well. Um, I good, still good. plan to give everyone at ECM a link to download a free copy mm -hmm. of a, like a demonstration version. Yeah. Um, it'll have a little personalized thing on it. Does that mean Ooh. you're going to have to build individual copies for the ball, or is it going to be configurable, ah, personalized? Ah, 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 yeah, I've got a, I've got a very, I've got a little clever system for doing that. The, um, if all goes well, the server will be able to do that itself. So it'll be able to inject the personalization oh, on the fly oh, during yeah. download. Yep, that's the idea. Sounds good. Yeah, that should be completely uh, compatible with uh, something on a NFC tag. Um. Well, yeah, the it, it, well, it's kind of separate to that. So the um, the idea would be that the server has a list of uh, well, the server knows what personalization to put there. Yeah, but um, we I could th we could embed the personalization details in the NFC tag, or at least an identifier well, it, in the NFC tag for each person. So yeah, just the ident that will just be for the for authentication. So uh, if we take away the tag for a moment, um, the idea was that it'll have. Um, just for authentication, um, it'll know badge numbers and badge names, so you can at least that's your login in effect. Yeah. Um, so that pe pe people can can guess at people's badge names or even see their badge names, but they're not going to get the number. So. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can um, that'll, that'll that that way it'll know who you are. Um, then and now what I'm thinking to do is at the event itself, let you set any personalization you want. Um, more generally, when it's not at, um, you're not lit at the one of the um, demo units at ECM. If you still just go to the download page, I'm thinking just to let it, it'll just assume you want, assume your personalization is your badge name. Maybe with a tick thing, so you can put commander in front of it if you want. Um, haven't decided on that, but that's the basic idea. Sounds fair. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm working on the um, the menu at the moment. So. The I'm very inspired by it, how f right elite and frontier developments have made so much available, um, mostly the, through the journal, but you can get stuff via like online API as well. I know, um, but what what I'm planning for is you can connect like one when, when it's running, um, I suppose depending on options, um, it'll listen on sockets. You can connect to it. It'll have like an API. You can, <laughs> you know, as in more how game modern things with its own work, API. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's natural. I would have thought. Um, so, you're write so a right, wrapper for it. So, well, right now um, you can load custom puzzles using the API. You can send oh, it grief. a puzzle, and it will it'll load it, and it'll start playing it. You you can say if you if you want to. You, I mean, it's it's kind of like a director. You can kind of make it do. So, like if you take the um, the time for example, you can in, rather than have the time tick up, you can set a maximum time that it tick down. You know, you can choose what you want. How, what, like what you want it to do. Yeah. That sounds cool. So if you um, if you talk to Vanti you might get it working with a stream deck as well, so you can push buttons to control your puzzles while you're playing. Um well it's um if a stream if you press a button, a stream deck responds to it and the stream deck has the ability to connect either with TCP, um it'll do well at the moment I'm just gone TCP because it's cross platform Websockers. as in local <clears throat> local host um haven't had well we could do a websocket um haven't i wasn't really on the i'm only saying uh, that because that's the mind, that's but... the one i know it, it's <laughs> well t the so what websockets are kind of like a like an extra layer um it kind of once you've got a websocket connection working the protocol is weird and you just want to use a library for it but the result is that one side sends a message and it calls back a function on the other side so it kind of streamlines things a bit for javascript um, that type of language um, but if it at the moment it's just a tcp connection like an uh, so you just open it and you start sending bytes to it um, the i'm making it on linux and um, so it's going to be very easy also to open a local socket um, i have looked into windows local sockets um, but for yeah, the i think don't. i might drop i think i might well, it seemed it seemed simple enough to be honest, um, but I might um, drop the idea of a local socket for now and stick with the one thing because it works and it's cross-platform. So. Yeah. yeah. TCP socket means you can also do on screen right now on the client. There elsewhere. we go. 
yeah that, <laughs> yeah so that that's the uh the sec second of two videos that i've sent to the uh sent to the orbital from over, over from imperial space um this specific video which i've probably narrated before um the entire inspiration for this was sudoku by the way um so the the actual mechanics there are a whole lot more things than just um the simple bot like um uh, activating each of the little cells um you've got arrows that push them around you've got ones the way you have to um you have to suppress them with other beams before you can use them. You've got all sorts of other other mechanics that I'm adding, um, but the original inspiration was Sudoku, and this is a, a kind of like a testament to that. Is that it has a Sudoku mode, a literal Sudoku mode, cool. which is a nine by nine by nine. <laughs> well, looking <laughs> forward, <laughs> definitely looking forward to to seeing it in <laughs> the flesh, so to speak. Mm. Uh, I, over, I think over at the event. Good. I'm pretty sure Flossie's going to going to uh, enjoy this quite a lot. No, she's going to whip out the beat. She's going to whip out the beat saber and start trying to chop all the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an action game. I like playing Sudoku, but I don't know no. if I could play that. She, she's she's going <laughs> to walk so, up to you and say, "Does it work on the Steam Deck? <laughs> Would it work on a Steam? Well, it works on an, it works on two laptops, which I for which I paid forty five pounds each. Um, it got so probably, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure a Steam Deck which can run Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> I got well, Second yeah. Life running on it today. Yeah, I'm quite well pleased done. about and your your yeah. jewelry store. Right. So 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 that <laughs> um, for for a um, veteran Sudoku solver, um, it makes a, so, some things easier. So the, where, how, if you see the video there, you see each layer. Um, each layer represents one digit. And that visualization makes it very easy to find things like pointing pairs or X-wings uh, on one digit. Um, I haven't thought about allowing you to color them yet, so you can like maybe find a simple coloring solution. Um, what it makes harder, though, and well, kind of, um, it's kind of harder to find a single. Uh, you can now tilt the camera upwards, which you can't see in this video, uh, but new feature. Uh, does make it kind of easier to find singles. Um, I do have a Sudoku puzzle in it, a hard, a hard example, which you don't see here, um, which contains a Y-wing, and that's incredibly hard to find using the blocks, <laughs> and much easier to find if you're pen and paper. Um, which, so a Y-wing is when you've got, um, it's, um, it's when you've got three different digits concerned. Uh, imagine if you've got one two, which can see two three, and you've got the two three that can see one three. Um, that um, that setup means that the um, you can eliminate some ones um, because those two the two cells with one can't both can't both lose one. I haven't had enough gin to be following this. <laughs> I'll take yeah. your word for oh, that. Certainly can't follow yeah. the words. But <laughs> no, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I'm really aware that Amelia cause... has to scarper. So I am. Yeah. Uh, Amelia, are you still there? You you just sent a message saying you've you've got Eat. an important video call with Alvin or something. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, so, sorry to cut. To sorry right. to cut. To cut you off there, Vulcarius. <laughs> but we have to eject <laughs> Amelia from the room. Violently. Violently ejected from the room before she misses <laughs> her important video call with Alvin. <laughs> Amelia. Yes. Go on, clear off. You've got an important video call with Alvin to do. Yes. Sorry. Thank you again. I'll see you all later. Sorry, I just uh, yeah, I noticed yeah. your message. Oh, yeah. yeah. It won't be next week. It won't be next week. It'll be. It'll no, be. It won't. Well, if you can get your stuff working, maybe the week after. Yes. But, um, yeah. Bye bye. Go on, quick. It's going. It's bye. just gone eleven o'clock. Right. Go on, clear off. Yeah. There we bye go. Bye. Right. And I, I also have to clear off in a second. Sorry to cut across yeah, your uh, carriers, but I've just watched I, I, the clock. I, I was done. And, uh, oh, you're, I, I you're was done basically. You're yeah. for the mugging. Yeah. Yeah. I'm for the mugging. For the mug. For the for the, for the, for the mugging and for the mug from everybody else. For the mug. For the mug. For the mug. Flossy. Mug. 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 For the mug. Aiden. Mug. Mug. Uh, apology officer um, mugged as well and disappeared. Enough. Yeah, gone. Throw throw yourselves out. We have to we have to raid somebody quick. Um, I found one. There we go. Uh, no idea what they are, but uh, it is the Sand Dog nineteen sixty seven. There we go. Uh, we're going to play the theme tune. We're not back next week, so take a week off. Go and do something else. Go and look at the outside world. Go and look at the sunshine. Something like that. I can guarantee <coughs> it's going to be raining next week. Other, other than that, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're still looking Sorry. forward to the. <laughs> The, the type what's it thingy. Sorry, I accidentally moved the prick down you what, into sorry? another room then. I accidentally moved him down into another room. My, Who? My mouse put little prick. I brought Me. him back. <laughs> sorry oh. about that. <laughs> I eject, kept, eject, I eject. Get him back, get him back. And I couldn't get you back. But, <laughs> oh, sorry about that. All right, my fine. Mouse, your well, mouse just caught your name. He's, he's, 
He's going now. He's going now. Right, <laughs> time for the credits. Um, we can't yell for the mug because Amelia's not here, but we're just going to yell for the mug. Thank you very much, everybody. For the mug. And, uh, catch you soon. Mug. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the show. Everyone's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too?